All right. Hey. Hey. I wonder if changing the bitrate killed something. I think changing the bitrate might have done something bad. I'll have to remember to never do that bit again. By the way, this donation came in when I was off. I want you to hear it. Okay. He has no style. He has no grace. The streamer has a funny face. Just w thought you might want to hear that one. There you go. Oh, it's still bad. Hold on. Wait, no, it's not bad. Never mind. I dropped some fra- Wait, do I need to change servers? It's good. No, we're back up. It went down for a second. Do I need to change servers? It's 100% fine. A hundred? Okay. Let's see how things go. Okay, when you hear me say this, press 2 in chat. Okay, that's fast. Okay, we're good. We're fine. New Come Tuesday dropped! Calling yourself the badass brown breaker. It's more like the blindside brown breaker. Because that's the second time now you've had to blindside me. And I get it. You're pissed off because I tabled your ass. Well, guess what? I'm pissed off too. So how about we take this a step further now? Come Tuesday? You won't have to worry about blindsiding me, but make sure you bring every ounce of energy you got, and I'll make sure I bring the hardwood, because it's you and me, Bronny boy, next week. No disqualification. I love that he just pops that. I love that he could just drop it randomly, and like some people would be like, Yo! <laughs> he said it! Who's behind him? I don't fucking know. I didn't know that he had, like, a table gimmick now. Bro thinks he's the Dudleys. I can't. Alright, that's enough video games for now. I need to find out more about music, bro. I like music, too. These are the top ten idiot musicians. Who are the most boneheaded bards in history? Hmm? The thumbnail had Kid Rock on it, by the way. <laughs> so... Kanye? Oh, he's probably number one, right? Surely this one will go fine. What? <laughs> oh, I don't think this one should be bad, right? This should be okay, I think. Car around and he kind of. How bad? I it's got it's it's Kid Rock, Fred Durst, Morrissey maybe, Kanye. That's four. Axl Rose. You know, he nearly took my face off with it. You know. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And oh, we got my boy Ryan in the building. Love Ryan. Our picks for the top Love ten him. Idiot. Jared Leto? I would not count him. That dude's an actor. One of my favorite songs of all time was Marvin Gaye's Got to Oh, this fucking guy. Give it up. <laughs> and, um, so we tried to, you know, get a little... Oh, back. man. He had one song. For this That's list, crazy. We'll be ranking ten musicians who are well known as being idiots. For the purpose of this list, Jeez. we won't be including musicians who have committed legitimately terrible crimes like abuse or assault. Oh, Rather, good. These okay. are the musicians who have not done anything inherently evil, but who are simply well known for their toxic personalities. Like Fred Durst. I told you he's going to be up here. Who in chat said Fred Durst was smart, huh? Was that you, Fred? You here? Number 10, <laughs> Well, well, well. Look who it is. Just it one of those days! It doesn't have the greatest of legacies, and neither does its front man, Fred Durst. Time to reach deep down inside. Oh my god, it's the song. <laughs> Take all that negative energy. Durst has done a few questionable things over the years, like calling Vladimir Putin a great guy with clear moral principles and referring to Slipknot fans as fat, ugly kids. <laughs> Oh my god. Owned. <laughs> Why would he say that? While being the, the front man of a new metal band. Why do we why are we beefing with Slipknot? Many people called out Durst's juvenile personality and found his fake tough guy persona as being annoying, while others have blamed Durst and Limp Biscuit for encouraging crowd violence. Well, I mean 
Yeah, but like a lot of bands do that, right? That's like the point. Come on. Holy shit, dude. I've never seen like images of this event. Woodstock 99? Didn't they have like eight porta potties? <laughs> if I remember correctly, this event had like eight porta potties for the whole fucking thing. The footage is insane. I need to do some research on this. I, I have not. I think I remember hearing about it, but. Watch the doc on Netflix. Oh, is it a Netflix doc? Hell yeah. I'm going to check that out then. That's great. Well, he hasn't been much of a target lately due to his irrelevancy. He was. Damn. Just nonetheless, quite the controversial figure in the 2000s. Number nine, Liam Gallagher. Oh, yeah. These guys are like pieces of shit, right? It's Liam and uh, Noah. Liam Gallagher is undoubtedly one of the most volatile personalities in all of music. Liam seems to hate his brother Noel with every fiber of his being. This is such a funny dynamic because they're like the, the lead guys of Oasis, which like objectively is a great band, but they fucking hated each other and they're brothers. Why? What did what's wrong? Noel? Oh, I thought it was Noah. Okay. They came to blows in 2009 after Liam allegedly swung a guitar at Noel's head. An act that <laughs> effectively disbanded Oasis. And for whatever reason, he went to his own dressing room and he came back with a guitar and started wielding it like an axe. And I'm Are they just both, like, big drunks or something? Either. Liam They're also huge meth heads. Oh, that might explain it then. He's been infamous for his abrasive personality for many years and in the past has allegedly headbutted a backpacker abused passengers on an airplane, and set off a fire extinguisher in football player Paul Gascoigne's face. <laughs> okay. Among many... Would that... Would that... What? What's in uh, uh, fire extinguishers? Like dry ice? Would that hurt? Like a burning? Chemicals, right? Yeah, that shit would like hurt. If that shit gets in your eyes? Ow. Many other instances... Number eight, Kid Rock. Did I, wait, so it's just Liam, not the other guy? It's like an evil twin situation. Damn, he jumped from really high. Kid Rock. With an Holy shit. That's a really high jump, Kid Rock. He... How did he do that? <laughs> I'm actually like kind of dumbfounded. Did they like did is it Rock. there's probably a trampoline down there, right? Yeah, they cut away. Okay. No fall damage. Yeah, he's got the portal shoes. With a name It's reversed? Yeah, but then they, that seems like it'd be harder to do. It'd be way harder to reverse it, put him on wires. Like Kid Rock, you can just tell that this guy is a character. And this musician <laughs> is a veritable smart character. This oh, I thought he was holding a microphone and doing keyboard, but no, he just has a voodoo stick. <laughs> he, just, he has the Jafar scepter from Aladdin for some reason. This is right. a veritable smorgasbord of controversies, and there are so many that we don't even know where to begin. There was the time that he assaulted a DJ inside of a strip club, or the time he posed with a dead cougar while out hunting with Ted Nugent. Okay. Or what about his past history of displaying Confederate flags, uh -huh. going on drunken rants, and spouting homophobic remarks? Okay. The controversy even continues in 2023, as Kid Rock helped instigate the Bud Light boycott after they partnered with transgender ah, actress. Dylan I didn't Mulvaney. know he did this. He calls himself okay. an American badass. We don't know about the bad part. We had one guy who said, I refuse to drink that. He was caught drinking one recently. I think I saw that. It's at his shows or something, right? Editor, let's, uh... Anymore. One guy. And everybody you else know. in the bar kind of rolled their eyes at him. Number seven, Robin Thicke. <laughs> this guy just seems dumb. Like, but in like a, in like a... I, I don't know. Like, like, he's at the edge. He's at the fringe of all your conversations with friends. And you're just talking. He's just like, ha, yeah. <laughs> okay. Pretty boy dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the like, height of his Blurred Lines fame, Robin Thicke was divorced from his partner of 21 years, with many people citing rumors of cheating. I, I heard that he put out an album specifically to get her back. 
like a full ass album, a full production, all about her and how he wanted her back, and she said no, which is crazy. Not not on her for saying no. She you know she's well within her rights. I just mean like holy shit, bro! You dedicated an entire uh, d d d article of your discography to this pathetic uh, gamble. Holy shit! Thick was later what an uncomfortable listen. Oh, this must have been what did it. Investigated by the Department of Child and Family Services for abuse towards minors. He oh, what the fuck? Did you said it wasn't going to be like this, Watch Mojo. What the fuck? You said it was silly. He was also accused Wh of plagiarizing Marvin Gaye, but vehemently denied the accusation. The fuck? However, the court didn't see his point of view, and Thick was found liable for copyright infringement. While he appealed the decision, the verdict was upheld in March 2018, mm. and Thick was ordered to pay half of his Blurred Lines royalties to the gay family. That's a lot, though. Didn't I think Ed Sheeran had the same thing, and he won his case, right? Ed Sheeran had the same case of, like, chord progressions being the same, and he won that shit. Number six, Azalea Banks. Banks is well known for her rather troublesome person. What does their orientation have to do with this? See, that's a very funny joke chatter. I couldn't come up with that in time. And that's good. Personality. More the whole family? <laughs> more so than her music. Maybe and it is genetic. She even has been involved in numerous altercations and disputes throughout the years. What you got to when I I think I remember seeing her on Wildin' Out, and they made fun of her, and she just fucking seethed. She hated it. Like The whole show is about, like, roasting people and having fun. And she got really mad whenever anybody made fun of her. She is very Which is very funny. on social media and certainly isn't afraid to speak her mind. Offline, Azalea allegedly punched and spat in a man's face in an airplane, uttered homophobic slurs at flight staff and made disturbing comments towards Sarah Palin during her heyday. That's a big-ass megaphone. In the end, it was a series of racist and homophobic tweets aimed at Zayn Malik that resulted Wait, in her what? being blocked from Twitter. Really? I didn't know what the fuck Number the five. Fuck. Can we not talk about the Wild and Out incident? That's still on YouTube. That's your homework. Go watch that instead. It's way funnier. <laughs> Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons is one of those rock stars who ruins it for everyone else. Simmons has made countless controversial remarks in the past that has have he? perfectly exemplified this. It better not be vomit. Okay. Weekend. Connie Liston, it's time to throw that's in not, the towel. Mojo that's not, that's not That's not the right voice. Lasted depressed. I don't know what's wrong with the weekend TTS. A few people keep trying to pop that, but it never works. Touring makes sense. And, and that's why it's good to be me. In February 2002, he told NPR's Terry Gross, If you want to welcome me with open arms, you're also going to have to welcome me with open legs. And later... <laughs> refused NPR's permission to publish the interview. He is also called Islam of vile culture, was sued by his former girlfriend for calling her an unchaste woman, has made <laughs> okay. sexual battery charges, and has expressed less than friendly advice to those with depression and mental health issues. Number four. Oh, just go on a walk. He's like, oh, just, hey, lift the, the play basketball, bro. Go outside. Morrissey. You need to stop. This queue is one big undo. It's a rough night so far. We got one more after it. I think it's gonna. It, the last one's okay. All right. Yeah, I think. I think. I think Morrissey might be an undo. This one's. This one's a little. Despite Morrissey living a very private and personal Feels like every Watch Mojo night is kind of rough. You know what it is? They're publishing more and more uh, inflammatory shit. Where's the goofy list? They're all over. Life. He made headlines. Popping anime mojo. You just want to see the top 20 hottest anime teachers. You're not getting me on that shit. Lines on numerous occasions no. for his rather outspoken and belligerent political beliefs. Ah, let's go ahead. Ted Nugent. Oh, no, not another one. Not another one. He's constantly finding himself in trouble. You for the said way no in which politics, mojo. You just said they'd be beliefs. dumb. No, you said they'd be Shut stupid. 
Axl Rose. Okay, this guy this guy is okay, I think. Doubtful that anyone in the music industry has a worse reputation He's just than drugs, Rose. I think. Rose right? is infamous for his decades worth of childish temper tantrums both on stage He's and just off, drugs. Which are well documented and easy to find. Right? One minute, guys. Who said one minute? We go on when we go on. No one tells Axl Rose when he goes on. He <laughs> does not know about the one song. What song? He has also been the subject of numerous lawsuits and is allegedly oh, no. very hard to get along with. Leading to the departure of many Guns N' Roses members. Yeah, he's a piece of shit, okay? <laughs> Whether yeah. he's storming off stage like a whiny child, yeah. jumping into the crowd to literally fight audience members, uh -huh. or calling Slash a cancer, Axl Rose is Jeez. always making enemies and furthering his reputation for being a huge jerk. Okay, well that one didn't sound so- Damn, I thought they were just gonna say Britney Spears. I was like, damn, that's kind of fucked up. Watch Mojo. Hey, by the way, ads now. I used all the snoozies I could. I'm sorry. My bad. I used all the snoozies I could. It's all I could do. But it's because we restarted the stream. It's a it's ad bomb and it's dropping now. Subscribe to Twitch Prime or Tier 1. Otherwise, you're gonna get some ads. I can't help you with this time. I'm sorry. It has to be John Lennon. It's definitely Kanye. We continue. Be sure to I'll bet you 30 subs is Kanye West. I'm positive it's Kanye. It has to be. Especially with the tone of the rest of this list. Right? Mozart clears? <laughs> Wasn't Mozart... I wouldn't call him an idiot. He was more... Um... Oh, never mind. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos. Yeah, Mozart or... was uh, deranged. All of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and throw as a savant. Yeah. Number one, Kanye West. Obviously. It's an understatement to say that Kanye West has been causing controversy. This seems fucked up. Though. Isn't he like crazy? See from like, day one. Isn't first, he, like, he, he like needs help, right? This is holier than thou. <laughs> For the love of me, britches, and on the name of me, booty, I beg of ye, let's just do baseball. <laughs> Pirate, for the love of me, britches, and on the name of me, booty, I beg of ye, let's just do All right. baseball. You know what? I, had, I have one more video, and I think we might need it. I think we need this one, because otherwise this video's in trouble. Maybe Mojo's dead. I don't know, bro. Think so? Maybe. <laughs> it's a tough one. This link better not be what I think it is. <laughs> I fucking knew it. <laughs> I fucking knew it. Tuesday? Yo! I cannot believe that didn't pop the crowd. I can't believe. I'm following him? I forgot I was following him. Further now. Come Tuesday? <laughs> Is he going to just do this all the time now? I would if I was him. Lean all the way in, bro. Seriously. Do you need the shirt? That's not... I, there's not a Come Tuesday shirt, right? It's very funny that they know about it, yeah. All right, one more, one more mojo, okay? One more, because we need to round out this list, and then we'll, we'll do... We'll go elsewhere, okay? I watched the Azalea Banks video, and my God, she's pissed. <laughs> she was mad. Mad, mad, mad. But not as mad as you're going to be when you see the top 20 shameless video game cash grabs. They're reaching into your pocket and taking the money right out. Oh, I hate it when they do that. Don't take my money, Blizzard. Stop! This one should be safe. <laughs> right? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our pick. Mm, Callum. Love this guy. It's for the top 20 Callum's great. Video game cash grabs. Street Fighter 4? What's wrong with that? 
For this list, we'll be looking at video games that were clearly Mario Galaxy, the ultimate cash grab. It's actually Mario Galaxy 2. They didn't even add anything. Created to squeeze life They put in Yoshi and they got more sales. That's ridiculous. It's not a new game. Did you give your money to any of these cash grabs? Which ones did you well, avoid I, like to play? I'll tell you when Share you show me. Thoughts in the comments below. Hey, Mojoholics. No, Point no, 20, no. Crash Team Racing Nitro. Fuel. Oh, we know about this one. This was just they added like cars and DLC later, right? Yeah, we know this video one. Games. How much All right, they added they added the, the cars and shit, and it was a lot of money. Didn't you like this? No, I don't. I think DLC is fine, but I don't know anything about this one in particular. Apparently, it was like mad expensive. All the cars and shit. I play this now. It's fun. Didn't you? Oh, you mean the game itself? I don't play Crash Team Racing. That's an L. Number nineteen, Dead Rising Four. What did they do? I didn't realize this came out. That came out in 2016? Dude, last I heard, this was still in development. I didn't know this happened. That was seven years ago? Dude, this series is dead dead. There was a time when Capcom upheld shady DLC practices. Street Fighter X Tekken was met with backlash for charging players for characters already in the game's files. I remember that, the on disc DLC era. And Azura's Fun times, Wrath yeah. was criticized for locking the real ending behind <laughs> a price point. Which is very funny. I can't believe this isn't up there. They put the real ending on the eShop. In the case of the latter, Captain That'll be $4.99, please. You bought the game plus tip. You needed to tip them for the ending. That's great. With Dead Rising 4. Not only was the game disappointing in comparison to other entries, but it ended on a cliffhanger, and you had to buy the very poorly received DLC to find out what happened. The studio Ooh. learned its lesson, but at a steep price. A fifth entry was canceled after Capcom Vancouver closed down in 2018. That might be what I'm thinking of as the fifth one. Because I heard another one was in development, but I didn't think it ever came out. I might have been... Yeah, it might have been that if one. If Frank could have... Whatever. I think Dead Rising is a fine franchise. That shit... That, that's a... That is an old era franchise. If you bring it back, you got to add a lot to it. But his way, this is where the story Unfortunately, would it's just... That's an old shit. Number 18. Bro. The House of the Dead. Remake. First game was fine. I mean, for the time. Second game was fine, too. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the House of the Dead series dominated arcade shooters. On top of zombies, it had fantastic gothic creature designs and blisteringly fast mechanics that made it a blast to play alone or with a friend. Have you guys ever gone into an arcade? I, I, I've done this a few times. It is always incredibly fun. You put in the money for player one and player two and you play akimbo. That shit feels so good. It's so cool. I love doing that shit. That's the best. Sega Just take over the whole machine. Made the first game in 2022, but most of the magic and nostalgia was lost. Well, because it's new. First launching on the Switch, it supported inaccurate motion aiming and could be beaten in less than an hour. Even when it it's was an arcade game, dude. Buttons, yeah. It strangely never added online co-op and barely had anything new to keep players coming back. It may not have been a full price game, but it still wasn't worth it. What are you talking? It's an arcade game. It's a remake of an arcade game. They they probably didn't say they were adding anything, bro. Number 17. Okay, this one. <laughs> I can't believe they did that. And I can't believe they got away with it. I guess they didn't because people hated it. But MMOs will always attract some people, right? You're always going to get some level of community. You got a key for this or a copy? I'm looking at the copy. 
right now. I have a copy of Fallout 76. That was the only bounty I've ever had where they sent me a physical copy. It was so weird. I've done so many bounties, they've never done that. Love and it was so strange. Left into a boring, bug-filled husk of a world, we have to question if you're thinking about anything else other than dollar signs. Upon the launch of Fallout 76, it was bizarre. Bethesda was met with confusion, anger, and disappointment from every corner of the internet. There's this really weird time before this game came out where there, people were like, okay, but what is it? Like, what happens in the game? What do you do? And Todd was like, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah, but like, what do you actually do? What does it look like? Anything. Anything you want is possible. Yeah, but like, for real, what... <laughs> oh, you'll see. Cry from what fans wanted from the series, and things shoot him. Declined for several years. <laughs> that guy's the a boss. Wait, is that Reevolution? Friend of the stream? What is he doing in the video? To pay for what they actually wanted. Needless to say, hopes aren't high for the future Might actually of be the him? franchise. Starfield incoming, dude. I, did you guys see the leak gameplay for Starfield? Dude. You, you're in violation of embassy regs. You're coming with me. It's security. We have a hostile intruder deploying. It's Fallout Three again. What did people honestly expect? Something. We're just doing Fallout Three in space again. It's like, it's crazy. Fallout was Oblivion with guns, and then uh, Skyrim was Fallout with spells, and then Fallout Four was Skyrim but with crafting and building, <laughs> and now we're Fallout in space. You. That will be seventy dollars for thirty FPS. Violation of embassy regs. How many of these? Uh, it's it's crazy. I literally don't care. I will lose myself in this. Hey, I hope you enjoy it. I really do. Bethesda made a Bethesda game. I don't think it's like. I guess that's true. If it was a FromSoft game and it looks like a FromSoft game, I'd be I'd be pogging right now. When Elden Ring was just Dark Souls Four, I was like, yo. <laughs> I guess it's the same thing. That's fine. Elden Number Ring was 16. literally just Super Dark Mario Souls 4. Three D All Stars. The cash grab. Announced for Mario's 35th anniversary, this collection compiled three classic 3D adventures do, for do, Switch. The Montes keep Super spawning, Mario. Mario. Stop. Sunshine just stop. And Galaxy. We're just exterminating all the moles in the basement. Excited, however, were the details surrounding its release. Nintendo charged $60 for the collection. Okay, I didn't know it was 60 Holy shit. I thought it was less. I bought it. I got it over there. I didn't know it was 60 Despite the newest game being from 2007. There was little to no improvements to the gameplay or graphics, and no additional features outside of soundtracks. Furthermore, Woo! Nintendo only made it available for a limited time, concocting a faux collector's edition approach to drive sales. Un Is it? Fortunately, it worked. Is it weird that I think it's okay when Nintendo does it? Is that is that a weird thing to say? Am I? <laughs> is that? Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. It's, uh, okay. No. See, chat agrees with me. They said no. I I like having all of this on a thing. I like having all of it on a cart. By the end of the six month period, but, it was said to be in stores. It had sold over 9 million units. Holy. Dude, I love that Nintendo could just do that. They could just do this over and over forever. Made for free. No, they had to make the intro screen with all the three games on it. The, the, the one where you pick what ROM you play. That's new. Had to pay a graphic designer. Like... 
two hundred bucks. So I'm gonna program it. It's like a DVD menu. Had to remap buttons. See. Number fifteen. Marvel's Avengers. I still can't believe this was this bad. How do you fuck up the biggest IP on the planet this bad? Blows my mind. A brand new Avengers game released during one of Marvel's I don't know who that is, by the way. I don't know who the big hand lady should have is. Been a generation defining experience. Sadly, we know that wasn't the case. Cashing in on the popularity of superheroes wasn't shameless, but tacking on a ton of live service elements and microtransactions certainly was. I didn't want to hurt you. Oh, you could put in Spider-Man to make more money. W Square Enix. W. Love that. Smart. Wait, this is offline now? They took off the servers? <laughs> didn't mesh well together. Especially since the game didn't launch as free to play. Post game support never turned. Spider-Man was only on the PlayStation version. Oh yeah, I forgot Sony has like the rights or whatever. Of that shit's confusing. Square Enix would claim Crystal Dynamics the wrong fit as developer, which anyone familiar well. with the studio's past work could have seen. Regardless, no amount of talent and narrative-driven games would have stopped the publisher from getting greedy. You guys remember Redfall? <laughs> Man. I just heard something about the wrong dev for the team in the game, and I thought about that. Radical Heights. Dude, Thank I thought this game might be something. I thought it might Turns be, you know, it's just PUBG, but... Company don't exactly Wait, these are the Lawbreakers guys, right? This is my boy Cliffy B. That's certainly how it looks with Radical Heights, the show-themed Battle Royale title being developed by Boss Key Productions. Promoted as being... That's my boy Cliff. Yeah. It drew little excitement due to its plethora of bugs and uninspired design elements. Not helping matters is the fact that Radical Heights was announced not long after the financial losses and player hemorrhaging of Boss Key's previous game, Lawbreakers, Law right? Lawbreakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this period where they went right from one into the other. Nintendo can release any old game and everyone will just be yonking when they resell Smash 64 million bro for 60 smackers. Actually, honestly, unironically, Melee like, people would go crazy for that. Accessible Melee. Like, if they released Smash 64, Melee, and Brawl, people would go crazy for that, I think. Because then you have Melee on the Switch, on the go. Melee on the go. Dude. Except for the Switch has native input delay. <laughs> think about that. Oh boy. Wouldn't that be fun? With Boss Key shutting down as of May 2018, it's safe to say this project didn't pan <laughs> out. Yeah, this one was really transparent because they put out Lawbreakers. People were like, I don't want this. And they're like, oh, uh, you like PUBG, right? Here, we made PUBG. I don't like PUBG. Number 13. Capcom Fighting Evolution. Huh? What is that song? Such is the case with Capcom Fighting Evolution. Pyro. Known outside of North America as Capcom Fighting Jam. Is that E Honda? <laughs> Draws upon various Bro Capcom is oh there's Dan. Hold on. Together to in a bookie. one another Neat. in two on one fights. All well and good in theory. Oh, that's cool. Look at all the different characters. They got Red Earth and Darkstalkers. Everybody's in here. But the game's blend of awkward that's kind of cool. Underwhelming character design proved divisive. It's been heavily speculated that Fighting Evolution was actually a salvage job constructed from the mechanics and artwork left over from the abandoned project Capcom Fighting All Stars. Oh, this shit is Mujin. Regardless, it doesn't look good when Capcom puts out a product that feels so much like an exploitation of fan appeal and audience goodwill. Is it really just Mujin? Like, they just took sprites and just slapped them all together in one game? That's... You know what? I, I'll give it up for Capcom, though, because that's a neat idea. 
I like the idea here, even if it didn't work out. Reusing assets and like being like, hey, maybe we'll make something out of this. Like an exploitation of that couldn't, you know, uh, okay, it's not 12, bad. Skylander series. What we're gonna do is, whoa! Joe? They got Joe in this game? Unfortunately, microtransactions have proven very profitable for Activision, but it also squeezed money from consumers. He's the toys, toy right? To life series Skylanders. Beginning as a spin-off of Spyro the Dragon, the franchise really took off in the early 2010s. <laughs> kids Was that Spyro? The multitude of creatures you could purchase in store and see I mean, kids love this shit, man. What are you going to do? Of course. Kids Activision love toys. You get physical oh. toys to love and play with. Ooh, you get a friend for life. To Come on, that's cool. Was released every year along with a ton of new figurines for kids to buy. Or, more accurately, get their parents to buy. The well, yeah, they're kids. <laughs> the idea was bled until Come nothing on. was left. Imaginators fell short of sales expectations. Is that a word? <laughs> That's a stupid name. That's that that sounds like a like reactioning. That's like a word that I would make up as a funny joke. And the series Imaginators? Would it be Imaginers? That's worse. This has stayed quiet since its last release. Imaginating. A mobile I'm game imaginating. In We're all reactionators here, yeah. Yeah, I don't like Imaginer. I don't like Number that. Number 11. Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy. Bro, but the cum the rain was really funny. Do they have the rain? <laughs> game. The original we already know this one, place. but I just want to see the if they have the rain. Redemption. You could go and check him out. Ten. There's no rain? I will. Damn. And I'll be seeing you around. Number 10, Evolve. Is this one a cash grab or just a bad game? When it launched, this four this came out. Yeah, I played the demo and I was like, "That's kind of fun." Versus one beast hunting game from Turtle Rock Studios definitely showed promise, yet felt strangely lacking in content. Yeah. Looking back to its promotion, the reason. Wait, is this a shotgun or what? Like Watch him. He shoots the shotgun like an AR. Bop, 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 bop. What the fuck is that? To its promotion, the reasoning becomes clear. Is that not a shotgun? It publisher 2K spent much of their time must be an alien weapon. Bonuses ahead of the actual full game. auto shotty. In-game monsters and hunters were being sold well before Evolve hit store shelves. With Turtle Rock themselves saying the game was designed with DLC implementation and sales in mind. I mean, that's that's not bad though. I don't think it's that bad, dude. Am I crazy? I mean, obviously, it depends on the circumstances. But, like, if you pay for a base game at, like, 40 or 50, and then they have a couple other things behind a paywall, like, you know, it, it's just, do you really like the game? Do you really want to try out this other stuff? The game had no content, though. I mean, like, obviously, it's a sliding scale. If you have enough shit in there to start like if you if you have let's say your game is beefy and meaty enough to be okay at the start i think it's okay to also have dlc like a month later for new shit if we're talking about a game not having enough that's a different combo and i don't think this game did but i'm just saying with Felt bad to sell more DLC before the game was even out. Yeah, obviously. Evolve that's... Getting multiple special I'm glad that this didn't take off because a few games did this. Season pass on but the idea, that, like, I, I think DLC is a fine idea. In, industry malarkey, in this theory. Game was. Number nine, Final Fantasy All the Bravest. That shit looks like an idol game. That's too many wizards. What the fuck? Square's landmark oh my God, franchise dude. might have its ups and downs, but this feels like an especially noteworthy low. Is it an auto battler? All the bravest seemed promising in concept. A mobile reworking of classic Final <laughs> Fantasy what combat the mechanics. Fuck? That's too many people. Many of the franchises. What most is going on? As selectable party members. What Unfortunately, the fuck? at release. Hooray! <laughs> 
This is chat when I pivot away from a mojo video. Hooray! <laughs> Unfortunately, at release, people were greeted with a repetitive grind heavy I like that though one's party could be utterly wiped out in seconds yet to grind okay who invited Hulk Hogan like there's all this and then this fucking guy just drops in from the cosmos <laughs> who 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 do you know here this dude just showed up at a brand new party wiped out that's Titan who's Titan seconds yet took who the fuck is Titan to respond unless you spend cash Furthermore, the uh, advertised legacy characters were walled off behind a randomized shop system. Ah, uh, gotcha for cloud. Why? Get one's party of choice. I like that. Honestly, if this game was an auto battling idol game, I would go crazy on it. This looks fun. This, unironically, I would love. Number eight, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. I mean, I guess. Kinda. Such Did he kiss it? A cute world, but not so cute business decisions. Deviating from the home renovation and it's Mario Party, right? Past titles, but Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival was pitched. I was working at GameStop when this came out, and it was so funny. Speak on that chatter. Why was it so funny? <laughs> I'm curious. Did people coming in, come in looking for Animal Crossing? You gave them this, and they got mad. Or as a variation on the party game model popularized by Mario Party. It certainly doesn't lack for charm and its character. You have to use Amiibo to play anything and you need at least four for four players. Characters and visuals. Yeah, Nintendo the is game smart. When it came to providing That's a hundred dollar game. Quality mini games and you needed the stupid Amiibo figures or cards which we never had. <laughs> and a consistently engaging mood. It became a I can imagine myself going home with this because I think it comes with an amiibo. You you buy the game, you go home with the amiibo, and then you have to come back 20 minutes later. Your kid is crying at home because you can't play with them. Because you didn't have the, the KK slider amiibo too. The Oops. Was made more as a means of selling Nintendo's signature amiibo figurines than as a genuinely worthwhile creative endeavor. This is worse to me than the Mario Collection. I think the Mario Collection is fine. You guys always talk about game preservation. Everybody's like, oh my god, you should preserve video games. Make sure they're playable later. Yeah, and they did that, and everybody hated them. You can't win. Hell, the director of Amiibo Festival freely admitted... Sunshine should not be preserved. The Amiibos were a factor in the <laughs> game's development. Not that the honesty makes it any more acceptable. Number seven, Diablo Immortal. Was this Diablo 4? Ever since the advent of games no? and phones, okay. players have been voicing their dissatisfaction. This was the phone one. Franchises yeah, okay. getting watered down mobile entries. Okay. Nowhere in the history of video right, we know about that. That's just the, uh, do you guys show. have phones? This guy, <laughs> crazy, he was in the right. What a hero. This guy could have pivoted into like a real Nintendo career, advertised right? Advertised this out of three as a Mario Party, the little kids can play because they don't have to read as much. Most yeah. of the game is random text boxes. <laughs> I like the idea of a, of a of a a toddler Mario Party. Although I think toddler Mario Party is just Mario Party, and you just don't care about who wins. I don't think that matters. While many agreed that it could actually be fun, okay. up oh, you we know that one. I've heard it. I get it. Number six, Dungeon Keeper. Oh, this is the mobile one. This is like an old EA game that they tried to revitalize. Way Wait, to is this Blooms? IP into the it's Blooms. Electronic arts. Yes, few are yeah. to forget when EA sought to reboot Dungeon Keeper as an allegedly free-to-play mobile Just tower game. defense, I guess, Launching is better. Launching in January 2014. I mean, mobile games are always going to be cash grabs, but the game is free! Soon drew scorn for the way the series is It's a free Dark game. You gotta pay somehow. ...strategy gameplay were mangled by the demands of a monetization-first business model. Any action undertaken could last... He is the devil. Like, let's be honest with it. That's the fucking devil. Like, he's gonna trick you. 
over yeah. 24 real <laughs> Of course he wants your money. Speeding up He's tricking you. You should take this as a lesson currency, from God. Which you could it's a test. Buy with real money. Between the disrespects paid to the source material mm -hmm. and This the is one of the devil's many machinations. This was an out and out disgrace. I did I never heard of this game before this happened anyway. So. Conquered this realm. Thank Number you, five, Satan. Harry Potter, <laughs> Hogwarts mystery. I've never heard of this. What is the Hogwarts survive. mystery? I've Many never heard of this. Fans of the Harry Potter books and wider franchise were ecstatic by the prospect of a mo <laughs> look at Hagrid. Global title that dealt with the life and times of their own personalized Hogwarts student. Uh -huh. Hogwarts mystery quickly showed its hand as a clear-cut exploiter of those very hopes and nostalgic dreams. Its core gameplay loop of tapping on-screen prompts to progress is built upon energy currency, which can be earned in-game uh -huh. or, you guessed it, purchased instant <laughs> with real dollars. Pick up the wand! The free to play stereotype Pick up the wand, dude! ...contrives situation after situation where players are drained of energy points. Wait, so is this like, this is just like Perfect Lie or any of those really shitty mobile games, but... With a Harry Potter skin on it, right? Honestly, that kind of rules. <laughs> I kind of like that. I would play a Mario one of those. It makes it a super cash grab. I would play... Listen, if there was a free game of an IP that I liked, and it was this kind of bullshit, and it was like, oh no, you've been ensnared in the swamp. Wait 30 minutes or pay $3 to play again. I'd be like, no thanks! And I would just wait 30 minutes, and then I would pull my phone out and get out of the swamp or whatever. I'd be okay with that. My ass would be waiting. With wait time I don't mind. <laughs> oh, wait, she's stuck in the snare for seven hours. Oh, no! Help her out! Somebody save her! She's going to be in there for a full work day. So as to make a quick Tony hearing about abhorrent business practices. Oh, giant W. Listen, I just think sometimes they're going to make some shit and it's bad and you just don't play it. Let the market decide. You just don't play this shit. For me, if I saw an IP that I liked and I'm at my job anyway and I'm trying to pass some stupid time, I'm not going to spend any money, but I like the IP and I want to see what fucked up concoction the dev is going to make, I'll download it. Fine with me. I would be okay with that. The only time I played these games was when I was at work and I had nothing to do. That's it. Cash injections seem reasonable. The infamous <laughs> Devil's Snare segment comes to mind, which forces players to buy enough energy to escape or wait and watch their character be strangled. I, okay, well that's a little... Imagine being a kid and seeing that. It was probably like $3. For shame, Mr. Potter. For shame. <laughs> you missed the... <laughs> that dude is not watering the plant. Number four, Metal Gear Solid Five: Ground Zeroes. Wait, I thought people loved this game. This was the paid demo, right? I heard this Once game was good. Time, a glorified prologue wouldn't have yeah, it's a demo. as a full-fledged Metal Gear game. Ground Zeroes fell victim to the push for more profit, being the first of two games that encompass the full Metal Gear Solid V experience. Yeah. From its central plot being incredibly brief and controversial in content. Demo for 40 bucks? Yeah, but I remember people loving this demo. They're like, this demo is awesome. So, like... No, it is still kind of shitty. I got 60 hours out of it. Out of the demo? Missions acting as shallow fluff. It was 40 bucks for like an hour? No, but like, there were like, I think there were variations of it. So it's like an hour if you play it one time, but it had a bunch of different, uh, like modifiers and stuff, I think. The entirety of Ground Zeroes felt superfluous to fans. 
In interviews prior to the game's release, series I played it one time and I think I refunded it. I was like, that was kind of fun. I don't want to play a fucking demo though. Peter Hideo Kojima claims that the decision to release Ground Zeroes was made in came the from him the and him alone. So long on the Phantom Pain. <laughs> Not a great move in retrospect. You met with him face to face. Yeah, it was just a demo. Big yeah. boss. Number three. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. Is it just a remake? Well, this was a debacle. 2016's Infinite Warfare was already on its way to universal derision thanks to a widely panned announcement trailer. However, matters did not improve when said trailer also declared the highly anticipated remaster of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare would only be available with special editions of Infinite Warfare. <laughs> you better buy this fucking game. It's a free add-on, dude. Why are you complaining? You get two games. For the price of one, you get two games. What a steal. Many consider Come on. the decision to lock off Modern Warfare Remastered in this fashion to be a <laughs> cynical and manipulative one. Warfare re $80? It's not free. Never mind. That shit's a $20 game. Remastered in this fashion to be a cynical and manipulative Ooh. one. Motivated by publisher Activision's push for constant rising profits. Later details, like added microtransactions and selling a decade Damn, that guy did not slide. Details, what happened to like this guy? Microtransactions oh. And oh, he was downed, I see. I don't know how these games work. Selling a I thought he was trying to do an Apex slide. For a higher price, only further soured opinions and Last stand? I don't, okay. Chad, I don't know what that is. The only one I know is Martyr, I think, which is the grenade, right? First, the image of a publisher driven by pure greed. Number two, EA's sports <laughs> titles. All of them? We added these moves in defensive situations as well. What do you if mean, like the yearly releases? Position, those desperation plays can I be mean, uh, kind of, but... There's no denying that Electronic Arts is one of the most hated publishers in gaming. Uh-huh. The company's most egregious acts of charging players come in its I got sports fucked games. Up. Many players have been complaining for years about how EA churns out entries every year with almost no changes to roster, gameplay graphics or anything really yet still charges full price all right chat what do you think they should do then what do you think they should do i mean roster changes should be different if the actual you know players change make a good game they already did these games sell like crazy they did make a good game people buy it you can't stop releasing them because what if the, the fucking, the, the a team goes on a tear for the first time, like, I don't know, the Cleveland Browns win it all, and they go crazy, and then people want to wanna immortalize that run with a Madden game. They want their boy from the Browns on the cover, and it's like a big deal, and they want the, the very strong Browns represented, 99 overall, right? You know what I gotta give them their Madden game? Let the Cleveland Browns have their moment. Live service? Battle pass that shit. You know live service games die in a month. Come on. That will not work. Why is Coney defending all of these? Because I just think... I, I think gamers are kind of closed-minded. You know what I'm saying? I think that these are perfectly, perfectly reasonable business practices of which we should all just shut up and consume. I think it's important to be appreciative of what developers bring to us, the gamer. <laughs> it's important to remember that there are real people behind these games who create and slave over them, their blood, their sweat, their tears, and they put these games together, and I think it's kind of disrespectful to not recognize that. <laughs> Coney, what did you eat last night? Uh... Leftover Domino's. <laughs> Thanks, Domino's. Well, he's gonna wear out the right we just got five hundred dollars from EA. Go next. I have a bounty. I'm, I, but it's not one that Chat 
is ready for in any capacity. Uh, I might, I might pop it. Uh, it's an eight-minute bounty. It's a shopping bounty. You would never expect it. Like Hit me, I can take it. it. You're not gonna like it. I I do want to try it though. I do want to try it. That's Why did you look down to answer that question? I still have the Domino's box on my desk. I looked down. Not to mention its focus on loot boxes and microtransactions. And now they put the pepperoni and put it in the cheesy bread. Recent years, which pushed players to spend more money on things that could have helped the game stand out from past yum, releases yum. to begin with. From Madden to FIFA to NHL, sports fans deserve better. What? But with EA in charge, it isn't likely they're going to get it. From the first frame to the Dynambus, it's football everywhere. How many series do that <laughs> guy's looking at me? What's the how many so they have Madden? FIFA, NHL, right? Damn, dude, that's a lot of money. NBA? Oh, yeah. Holy. WWE? EA doesn't have WWE. That's uh, 2K. Yeah, and NBA is 2K too, right? Yeah. They don't have MLB either, because that's the show. Before we continue, be What's sure number to subscribe one? to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about Most our latest videos. Most shameless cash you grab. Have the option to be Overwatch? Maybe just like loot boxes in general? Videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your... Tony stream number one. What do you mean? <laughs> There's nothing about my stream that's video games. Maybe like once a month. Settings and switch this is a just chatting cash grab. And you could subscribe for free with the Twitch Prime, which I totally forgot to remind you guys of. Did you guys know you could subscribe with free for with the Twitch Prime? And all you have to do is go below the stream, and it's right there, and it's it's right it's it's at the bottom. And if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. It's a free way to subscribe to the stream. And in case you haven't noticed, we're one away from the sub goal. Thirty-one eighty-four. That's the big number. If we can hit it tonight, that would mean a big. Big reward for you guys, a big prize, a nice big gift that I have. I would love to tell you about a bounty that's going to change your life, but I'm not going to do it yet. Thank you, Tutorupa. I just pay. See, that's that makes it a cash grab. <laughs> that guy just gave me $5. What a sucker. Number one, Metal Gear Survive. Really? Yeah. Thanks. That was. I thought it was just a bad live service game. The biggest there cash grab? Had to be a better way to try and live up to Kojima Productions' efforts, right? Konami's first Metal Gear game after the <laughs> departure of Hideo Kojima <laughs> aims to present a clear and enticing vision for the series' future. What the gaming public received was Metal Gear Survive, a post-apocalyptic survival game yeah. rooted in current design fads and built on borrowed assets from Metal Gear Solid V. Many found survive to not only be tiresome, it was and just bad. I thought but it was just a bad a game. Cash in on lingering goodwill for Metal Gear. And let's not even get into Konami's inclusion of a microtransaction based currency and selling of save slots for real <laughs> world money. I mean. What's the angle here? <laughs> what is the angle here? Okay, hear me out. Were the save slots cloud-based? That takes up server resources. Okay, Connie, if you're so okay with all these business practices, then <laughs> yeah. you buy all these games. Oh, no, no. These are all old games. No, no, no. I've already consumed all of these games. I enjoyed them all, too. Beat them all to completion. I've beaten all these games with all the money that I have because I'm rich. <laughs> you understand. Thanks, YouTube. I th if this is if this is a, a, a cloud save situation, you know what I'm saying? Like quit digging in your ear. That is there's something itchy in there, man. Maybe like a bug? To completion? Beat all these games, yeah. And I never paid a dime. <laughs> 
I actually beat them for free. That's way more impressive. I beat them all without paying anything. I actually tried to do that with, um, Let It Die. Bad idea. Holy shit, that game was awful. <laughs> There's a spider in your ear. Okay, unironically, this happened on stream. One time, I don't think it happened on stream, but one time I, uh, I, I put on my headset. And I felt this, like, tickling in my ear. I was like, what the fuck is that? And I take it off, and it was, there was an earwig in there. Like, one of those crawly things with the pincers. I freaked out. Like, threw it across the room. Horrifying, dude. A what? It looks like this. Hold on. One of these things. It was because my headset was just on the floor. It was just on the ground. It was charging, and it fell off my table. I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah, that thing. They're called earwigs because it. I think it was, like, thought that they crawl into your brain and lay eggs, but that's not actually true. Thank God for that. Otherwise, I would have bug brain. Oh, shit. Ads are going to pop in 15 seconds. Subscribe with Twitch Prime or uh, Tier 1, guys. Really quick. You're going to get the ad bomb. I got to do this YouTube outro before people go. Wow, what a great night of Mojoing. Did you have a good time? I did. Like the video, please. I, I don't know how much of that is going to make it on YouTube because those were some pretty rough videos. What's your favorite shameless video game cash grab? I can't take any money from you because you're on YouTube. So you could subscribe because it's free. Or you could come over here and spend your money like all these idiots. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> so long. Goodbye. Look at that guy, Bobo the Chimp. <laughs> Look at this, he gave me five dollars. <laughs> Did the ads pop? Oh, not yet. Guys, quick, give me five dollars or the ads are going to pop. The ads are coming, quickly, fast, fast. You're going to get ads. It's going to make you spend even more money. You're going to be advertised to and it's going to be very effective. You're going to see it and be like, oh my god, I need that in my life now. You're going to get marketed to, dude. Good time to go. Actually, don't sub because I got to go to the bathroom anyway. I'm going to go to the bathroom. You guys don't uh, don't worry about it, okay? When we get back, we have lots more to do. <laughs> Did not think Mojo would take this long. Coney gets 100% sub split. You know it. Me and Jeffy B are boys. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to see if I can. Um, I'm going to get water and uh, try to come back before the, the ad breaks. Um Here's three minutes of animal facts. Are there three minutes? Top ten animal fa Dude, I actually got Watch Mojo. That's crazy. Okay. Fun facts about animals! It's good. Thanks. It's time! All right, I'll be right back. One second. Stuff that isn't super boring. Today's episode, Animals. Fact, did you know that squirrels cannot burp? What? Mm -hmm. What's the point of drinking pop? <clears throat> did you know I that to rats I forgot to actually bad, laugh when bad. you tickle them? Okay. <laughs> How do you know that? Did you know that male seahorses are the ones that give birth? Ooh. Did That's you know that turtles can breathe through their butts? Why do you know all the butt facts? Did you know that hey guys, when Connie gets three back, parts. let's call him Poopy Poo Poo Pants. Hey, uh, Kim, yes? isn't the plural of octopus is octopi? You know, it's actually both. What? I know neither is incorrect. Well, look it up. If the internet says it, it must be true. Exactly. Speaking of which, go to my webpage called Francisco is the coolest guy to ever eat a pickle. Wait, that is not your website. Your website is startune.ca. .com. Dot you da bomb. Dot ca. Dot ca. Yeah, it's dot ca. It's a Canadian website? Yes. We are in Canada. What? In it or on it? Did you know that if you pour mouthwash on a scorpion, it'll stab itself with its own stinger? I mean, like, I hate brushing my teeth, but mouth cleanliness isn't Did you that know gorillas bad, can bro. work a Glock? That's awful. Did you know that ants never sleep? What? And what do they do in class? Uh... Did you know that vampire bats actually drink blood? I thought that only happened in cartoons. Okay, that, okay. 
How about a positive fact? Positive yeah. fact. Did you know that penguins propose to each other by passing each other a, a pebble? Cute. And then they stay together for life. Super cute. So romantic. Did you know that the only reason sloths come down from trees is to go to the bathroom? <laughs> that is so romantic. Yeah, it is. What? No. What? What? Did you know that emus cannot walk backwards? What? No. Well, neither can humans glued to the floor. Well, yes, I guess that is true fact. That is true. This concludes another episode of Learning Stuff that isn't super boring. That thing freaks me out every time. time. Yeah. Every time. As soon as the elephants hear Paul's music, they come close. Paul's a piano player who loves spending time with elephants. He first met Chaichana at a sanctuary. Chaichana had worked his whole life carrying heavy logs. He was nervous around people. He didn't trust them. But Paul had an idea. He asked the people at the sanctuary if he could try playing piano for him. But they were worried. Chaichana was so big and really afraid of people. He might hurt Paul. Paul knew they'd have to set it up carefully. It wouldn't be easy. So one day, they brought a piano out to a quiet area. So Chaichana wouldn't be scared. He towered over the piano, but Paul wasn't afraid. And then he started to play. All of a sudden, Chaichana was calm. He had never heard music before. He couldn't stop listening. Paul brought his piano to Chaichana again and again. And every time, Chaichana was still listening. Soon, Paul was doing more than just playing music for his new friend. Chaichana was starting to trust Paul. He didn't seem nervous around people. That made Paul wonder, could music help other elephants too? <laughs> and before long, he was playing for all the elephants at the sanctuary. first get to the sanctuary, they're often scared and sad. All right, uh, two things. One, I don't know why my viewers went up. Two, don't ever hurgle, gurgle, churgle when I'm on the toilet again. Don't ever do that again. Didn't like that one bit. <laughs> Keep the video on. Thirty-one ninety subs. I'll yeah. keep the video on. Run and make a party and come in running every and run to the show to don't let him influence you. What are you talking about? Paul's music comes. A them what bounty? And helps them express themselves. Oh what? Now when he brings his piano out. Why did the elephant have a piano? The elephants are already there, waiting. It's like they're asking him to play. Aw. and he knows their favorite songs. The older elephants like slow, dramatic music. <laughs> and the babies like... Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's so cute. So now, when a new elephant comes to the sanctuary, Paul moves his piano out into the jungle. Do they like piano music or is it just any noise? Most transformative Coney content. 
Is it just pia I feel like it's just any I guess it's pretty noise. But it's specifically Sits music. Down to play and waits it's for art the they've never shit. been exposed to. Any art is art elephants have never been exposed to. If you raised an elephant from a baby to be an artist, could they do it? I know elephants can like paint, right? Like this. Ta da. Damn, that's pretty good. Never mind. Oh, never mind. It's cr it's cruel. Never mind. I don't like that anymore. We're canceling that. I was going to say, that's pretty good. I don't think this is real, right? I guess it's on YouTube. Four-year-old elephant named Suda painting a picture of herself. Oh, my God. Does Suda know that's her? There's no way Suda knows that she's that. You think? Water reflection? Ah. I was going to say, they don't have mirrors in the wild. So The elephants don't have a concept of self. They don't know what they are or who they... Oh my god, that's beautiful, Suda. Holy shit, I want that painting. I want a picture from Suda. We should have spent our the money I gave you on that. Elephants are sentient? How do you know? They don't talk. Isn't it crazy that there isn't a single animal that can talk? Don't say parrots. Isn't that crazy to you? Not yet? I, th I think there should be. How, could, how can there not be a single talking dog yet? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm serious! So true. Not this again. I'm not kidding! I think that's crazy. Not a single dog has ever learned how to talk. All right. I don't know if I want to watch the Scrabble video or the baseball video. I mean, baseball is baseball, but Scrabble is Scrabble. Scooby can talk? Stop. Come on. Is Scrabble Hubies? I don't know who that is. Both at the same time. I'll do a baseball. MLB has entered the Scrabble is any time. Baseball is time sensitive. Alright. This is why the 2023 MLB season has gotten out of control. Love baseball doesn't exist. Love this channel. MLB has entered the dog days and everything that can go wrong has. We have players going after other players. Players going after teammates. We have two rivals going after each ooh, other. Ooh, and hit him. Division title. Managers going after umpires. <laughs> what, did, what did he mean by this? I think I saw this in another one of his videos. Why did he do that? Is that like a bow and arrow thing? What kind of pose is this? Well, one of his pitchers. Oh, is it Hulk Hogan? Oh, he's doing a Hulk Hogan, like a. He's not. I thought it was like a Hulk Hogan pose. Well, one of his pitchers apparently is going after him. We have a player who is arguably having the greatest season of all time, going after a playoff spot and failing. The two highest paid players apparently don't like each other and are going other places. Some of the richest teams have Wait, failed. Wait, the Mets is the richest team? I thought they were like a joke. Causing the Mets are the richest team? I thought that was like the Yankees. The Yankees were always like the crazy team, but... Thousands of angry fans. While one of the league's poorest teams has shocked the world... But because of a recent incident, even their fans are angry. Baltimore is poor? While the angriest fans what did we of do? them all are so mad, they are currently Let's waging go a war <laughs> on their own franchise and doing everything they can to make their owner's life a nightmare. <laughs> the teammates are the worst team in baseball, but according to many, that is exactly what their ownership wants. They oh have the God. lowest batting average in the league, have the lowest slugging percentage, have the least amount of hits, have scored the least runs, while also giving up the most runs. <laughs> Not the most batters, according to the metrics, have the worst defense and on pace <laughs> Dude, what? 
These are just the Washington Senators. It's like the opposite of Globetrotters. That's amazing. According to the gotcha. Metrics. Wait, isn't he out here? He caught the ball. Wait. Metrics have the worst defense. <laughs> it's pro running. He's not out if you catch it. It hit the ground. Did it? The most runs. Walk the most batters. According to the oh, it did. You're right. Okay. I didn't see. I thought it was just a line drive, but you're right. It did hit the ground. Into the metrics, have the worst <laughs> defense and on pace to finish the season. Good on Vargas, bro. This, this should get you fired and sent to jail. I don't know if I could continue on at this point. I feel like if I'm Medina here, I would quit. You would have to. With a negative 391 run differential. <laughs> what that the would fuck? be the worst of all time by over 40 runs. What's going on with Oakland? In April, A's ownership announced their plan was to move the team to Vegas. And ever since, A's fans have done everything they can to stop them. In the parking lot before a game, they organized an event allowing anyone to throw tomatoes at pictures of the owner. A coffee shop in Lake Tahoe, where the owner's family owns a home, has officially Damn, been a coffee that's shop beautiful. in Lake Tahoe. I want to go to Lake Tahoe. Holy shit. Where the owner's family owns a home has officially banned him, even putting up a sign in the store that says F John Fisher. The A's let kids run the bases after a game. The cool. kids started chanting, sell the team. They put <laughs> signs roasting ownership in the outfield. Jesus, MLB dude. Didn't like this negative attention and cropped these signs out during highlights of a home run. <laughs> well, with that. Ace fans called them. Good editing, actually. Hey, whoever did this uh, this editing, good job, man. Now, Straight up. embarrassed him so much, MLB was forced to apologize. And most famously, they organized a reverse protest night. The day before, less than 5,000 people came to the game. On the day of the protest, over 27,000 people showed up. Okay, they all bought tickets, right? They did a fan-organized giveaway, distributing thousands of free t-shirts to the thousands of fans who gathered in the parking lot before the game. They chanted, sell the team. I don't know if that's an effective protest. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like everybody's put... <laughs> we have the Wolverine meme in the crowd? Wait, so they're trying to tank the team so that they can give it to Vegas. How does that work? Would that even... Is it so they can... Sell it for ch I don't understand. I don't know how this shit works. Throughout they want a new owner. Ugh. The game, and then in the imagine being on that team. That's so sad. Do you just pick up a, a bunch of like minor league rejects? Fifth, they went dead silent for an entire batter. After the at bats, they went back to screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Shirts to the thousands of fans who gathered in the parking lot before the game. They chanted sell the team throughout the game. And then in the fifth, they went dead silent for an entire batter. Just for one guy? <laughs> We're very respectful for that one guy. I think, unless this is disrespectful, I don't know. I want to see that clip. That sounds so funny. Just everybody shutting the fuck up for one guy. After that would be terrifying. Imagine being that guy. After the at bat, they went back. Look at the highlighted comment. Hold on. Oh, there is no highlighted comment. I thought maybe there'd be like a thing of that. Come on. To scream. On chat? There's a lot of highlighted comments on chat. What do you mean? At least one. Wh where's the highlighted comment in chat? I don't know. I don't see it. Is it up here? No. Scroll up. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a mess. The fans were standing in silent during the first batter of the fifth inning. See ya, man. They want your fucking blood. Actual hatred. And it's not even at you as a player. They won this game, by the way. Let's go, A's. <laughs> All we needed was a little crowd participation. Let's go, crowd. Let's hear it for our A's. There's a sell the team chant during the All-Star game, too. <laughs> Imagine being the All-Stars. What the fuck you say fuck me for? What did I do? I'm not even on the A's. I'm on the Mets. That's funny. One fan ran onto the field. After the game I will buy the team. 
Guys, let's pitch in. Subscribe now so we can buy the A's. We can buy the Oakland A's if we all pitch in together. I'll sub-goal it. Subscribe right now with a Tier 1 or a Twitch Prime. Game, they threw trash on the field. But the A's played amazing and ended up upsetting the Rays, who had the best record in baseball at the time. However, the very next day, the A's announced a bill passed that got public funding for a stadium in Vegas. Uh, by the way, beautiful venue. Damn, across from Excalibur? Dude, that's in the heart of Vegas. That's a great location. Mandalay Bay is right here. Yeah. Dude, if there's Evo, you just pop right over. See a game? Vegas. Since that punch in the face, A's fans have gone. Imagine the traffic. Oh, God. Even harder. They've yeah. taken the protests on the road, chanting, sell the team at the All Star game. Ch I wouldn't say hard. Yeah, right in the butthole of Vegas. Chanted it in Colorado, chanted it in Los Angeles, organized a joint protest in San Francisco, and chanted it there, and even organized another reverse protest in Oakland. Days before the protest, the A's raised the price of tickets for this game, receiving major backlash. But <laughs> say this was just their automated system that raised prices due to the higher demand. Bro, if I knew a protest was about to pop, I'd put that shit up. That shit goes high. Either way, $300 a seat, please. 37,000 people came to the game, the most for a game in Oakland all year, and once again, they chanted, uh, they were chanting. Roller Coaster Tycoon ass? Oh shit, it's about to rain? How about an $8 umbrella? Same exact thing in Cincinnati just a year ago. But then, Ellie De La Cruz changed everything. Since 2020, nearly all of the Reds' best players were either traded or left in free agency. In 2022, they lost 100 games. Fans were showing... <laughs> There's something about missing a pop fly that is just incredible to me. Because everybody pretends like it didn't just happen. Oh. Three people around. At least two other people saw you, not counting everybody in the crowd. Maybe some people are getting food or in the bathroom. They didn't see, but at least all these people did. Games. Fans were showing up to games with bags on their heads. In April of this season, they set a franchise record low in attendance when only 7,500 fans showed up to a game. On June 6th, they had a 3.4% <laughs> <laughs> chance oh to God. make the playoffs. This that shit was is the little day giant. Ellie De La Cruz got called up. The crowd looks this like a this. ragtag team. Immediately hit a double, and the Reds upset the Dodgers on a walk-off by another rookie, Matt McClain. The next day, De La Cruz hit his first homer and a triple where he ran to third faster than any other major leaguer has this year. Damn, he is fast. Look at him go. Later in the game, another rookie, Will Benson, hit a walk-off to shock the Dodgers again. Oh, this is just a miracle team. This is some angels in the outfield shit. They have some supernatural help. After call what is that subscribe notification? Bro, uh, hold on. What is that? Come on, man. What are we doing down there? This. <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh, yeah, you see it now, right? <laughs> Come on, man. The videos are fine. She's pitching. I... I guess that's what you call it. You don't have to put your leg that high. <laughs> At least not that I'm aware of. Maybe she pitches fast as hell. 120 fastball. 120 miles an hour. <laughs> Pulling up De La Cruz, the Reds went on a 14... And oh, the Viking King going into a series against the Braves two months since setting a franchise record low in attendance. They set a franchise record high in attendance. Damn, look at all the products. <laughs> Procter and Gamble is advertising Swiffer, Gillette, Old Spice, Head and Shoulders, Pampers, Tide, Charmin, Bounty, Crest, Pepto Bismol. All of them have earned a spot on top of the Titan Tron record high in attendance by selling 126,000 tickets over a three-game series. 
In that series, Ellie De La Cruz hit for the cycle in only his 15th career game, leading an insane comeback against the Braves, extending their winning streak to 12. It must be really cool to be like a star player on a shit team. Like, you are the show. Everybody loves you. That's kind of neat. De La Cruz continued to make history. Two weeks later, you get he so much attention second, for that. Then stole third, then stole home, <laughs> and did it in two pitches. Bro is stealing. Holy shit. They're going to make a rule for him. You can't do that anymore. You steal one time. That hasn't happened in over 50 years. He made what more the? headlines. How do you steal home? When he came to the plate with this. This is illegal. The Nationals oh, he's made a this big guy. deal about it and pointed it out to the umpire. He is the knob on it. I forgot about this. Who made Ellie take the bat knob off? The receptacle. This knob usually has a sensor in it to track swing data. I remember data, that. Yeah. Which is technology. We did see this part. To use yeah. In games, but De La Cruz likes the feel of the bat with it on, so he's been taking the sensor out and just using the casing with nothing in it on his bat knob. That's cool, Since the I technology guess. Technology is removed. This actually is legal. The umpires were informed during the game, so the next time he came to the plate, he had it on. He hit an absolute bomb, started pointing to the bat knob to rub it in the See? Nationals' face, See? and got Ellie Chance as he rounded the Holy bases shit, in dude. an away stadium. What an eccentric young man. Going into the season, the Reds had a 1.7% chance to make the playoffs. Right now, they're only a half game back of a playoff spot. Safe to say, Reds fans are no longer pissed at ownership. However, the first place Orioles fans are. In July, their broadcaster said something live on the air that got him indefinitely suspended. This has caused protests huh? at the stadium and backlash from across the league. What but did he say? The guy for no reason. And most importantly, you embarrassed yourself. <laughs> what did he say? This was fucked up. What did he say before I go to bat for this guy? What did he say? Oh, what you did is disgraceful. To the <laughs> Don't look it up. Business. <laughs> the incident occurred during a game versus the Rays. The Orioles were trying to gain sole possession of first place after the All-Star break for the first time in over seven years. They've surprised <laughs> everyone this year because of guys like Cedric Mullins, who last week robbed a home run to save the game, then hit a home run to win the game an inning later. You guys ever go to minor league games? I have a minor league stadium that's really close to me. Uh, those are not fun. The last minor league game I watched, uh, it was it ended three to two. <laughs> They're fun to go to. They're fun to go to, right? Because it's like a fun night at the field. But like, it's like low scoring. <laughs> Dollar beers are always fun. I I just don't. They do the mascot races. They do all the dumb shit. Like you know, they're fun to go to because you get to sit outside and eat carnival food. Which is fine, but three two is not low scoring. I, I don't know, bro. I saw uh I saw this score earlier. I would much rather see uh this game. Hold on, I just saw it. Bro, I just saw oh my god, where was it? It was like eleven yeah, seven to eleven. <laughs> I wanna watch that game. That's the major league shit. 18 runs total. It's only the bottom of the sixth. That's how the pros do it. 7,500? 7, 7,500 to what? That's Bugs Bunny numbers. I want to see high scores, bro. 3 to 2. L. Into the season, the longer piss that owner cast cause pro business. They've surprised everyone this year because of guys like Cedric Mullins, who last week robbed a home run to save the game, then hit a home run to win the game an inning later. Their young catcher, Adley Rushman, who hit a ton of bombs in the home run derby batting lefty, then started batting righty and hit even more bombs. The Jeez. best closer in the league, Felix Bautista, who's striking out four. 47.8 of the batters he's faced as well as the splash zone where fans get sprayed with water every time there's a big moment the sprinkler which is done at splash zone where fans get sprayed with water every time mr splash it's a bird team why are we do oh it's a bird bath oh my god never mind 
I was like, what is the significance here? It's a bird bath. I get it. We're birds. That's fine. I get it. I can't. Good one. Good one, O's. Love that. Time there's a big moment. Amazing. The sprinkler, which is done at second. Very time good. A double, as well as the dong bong in the dugout for any Orioles player who hits a home run. Right now, liking the Orioles is exciting, but they've been terrible for years, which is why their broadcaster, Kevin Brown, said this. It's been a minute. The Orioles split a two-gamer with the Rays in June. They had lost their last 15 series. Jeez! Here at Tropicana Field. According to reports, Orioles ownership thought that pointing out the Orioles' past struggles was enough to suspend him indefinitely. <laughs> the say jam of the MLB. More information started coming out that claimed ah, okay. that Orioles ownership had banned announcers from talking about Adam Jones, Manny Machado, Buck Showalter, and more just because they weren't on the team anymore. They weren't allowed to mention how Dean Kramer and Bruce Zimmerman got on the team just because the Orioles had to trade Manny Machado and Kevin Gosman to get them. <laughs> this became a national... It was an ad lib. He read the graphic. That's true. They did feed him that information. He read what was on the screen. Damn. ...story and embarrassment for the Orioles who That's announced funny. Kevin Brown would return to the booth, which did not stop Orioles fans from protesting with signs and chanting free Kevin Brown throughout the game. The Orioles started the season with a 1.3% chance to win the division. As They're not catching shit. They, they're still winning the division. What did Sajam do? I guess I should explain it. Sajam used to work Capcom events. Uh, for Street Fighter Five, and he criticized the online because uh, they didn't have rollback, I think something like that. But he was uh, he criticized Capcom pretty like you know pretty flippantly. He's just like yeah, the online sucks, and he got blacklisted from events for years. They just didn't let him work the events, and now they've brought him back, obviously. But I've worked a couple of Nintendo events, and I'm not making that mistake. Hey, listen, online's a different game. The players got to deal with it. <laughs> hey, bro, I, I y'all got to deal with it, man. I don't know what to say. It's a different sort of experience. You guys know what you're going into when you play the fucking online Smash. You know what you're doing. What do I look like making fun of them for? Do you know what I'm saying? Like they know. I I would I did on a couple Nintendo broadcasts. I was like. Yeah, the lag in these games makes some of these uh, strategies better. I I never got a talking to for that, but I always felt like I was towing the line. There was an Ice Climbers player during one of the Nintendo events that would just spam Squall Hammer. Like, he just fucking spammed it. And there was really, like, online, it's very hard to deal with. <laughs> and I kept, I kept pointing it out on commentary, and I'm like, I'm getting very close to somebody talking my earpiece. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Cause I was like, I was like, yeah, honestly, the the lag on that makes it really hard to. It looks like that's very hard to approach with the input delay of online, and I I never got in trouble for it. But and as upset as their fans got, it's nothing compared to the Yankees. That squall last, hammer. And their season has been a nightmare <laughs> that keeps getting worse. That guy it got like third, with I think. Multiple strange cheating fiascos, beginning with Domingo Herman, who was caught with a sticky substance, but for some reason wasn't ejected. Fast forward a month, and Aaron Judge was seen on the broadcast peeking out of the corner of his eye this caused widespread speculation of sign stealing the can you not look any do you you can't you have to look straight i guess blue jays believe the yankees my ass would be looking first base coach was stepping way out of the coach's box you can but it's considered unethical bro everything is fucking unethical in this sport shit is nonsense to get a view of the pitcher's grip, saw what pitch he was going to throw, then communicated the pitch type to the batter who peeked out of the corner of their eye. Ah. So the next day, when the Blue Jays noticed the Yankees' third base coach was out of the coaching box, they called him out. The Yankees started screaming back, and the Blue Jays' manager called somebody a fat boy. The umpire <laughs> made the third base Got coach him. go back into the box, but the very next inning, the Yankees started yelling at the Blue Jays because their coach was out of the box. The umpires had to settle it and made sure all the coaches stayed in the box. Coach was out of the box. The umpires. This guy has beautiful eyelashes. 
You see that? Oh my god, look at the curve on that. Do you see this? Shits are long. I just noticed it when it, it cut back. Settle it and made sure you guys see that though, right? That's crazy. All the Coney is right. I'm telling everybody's hawing and and wetting me. I'm serious. Those are crazy, right? Which has stayed in the box. Ironically enough, <laughs> in this very same game, Domingo Herman got caught with a sticky substance again and got ejected. A sticky su. <laughs> I saw chat analyzing earlier, and I thought that was funny. A few days later, a another sticky Yankees what? pitcher was caught with a sticky substance on his hands, but e a sticky what? Even <laughs> with all this hoopla, the Yankees were playing great until this happened. So Fernando stupid. Tatis Jr. bumped into Anthony Rizzo. Ooh. He awkwardly shoved Tatis in response and was shaken up, but Rizzo seemed okay and continued to play for two months. When the Yankees found out, he had been playing with a concussion this entire time. Son of a bitch! Rizzo. Dude had a bruise on his brain. Out, he had been playing with He's a playing concussion that whole time? this entire time. Damn it! What a fucked up two months! His average tanked for two months. You guys know what a concussion is, right? It's a fucking bruise on your brain. Your brain bangs into your skull. It's fucked up. Rizzo was passing concussion tests. Horrifying. It says he felt dizzy, hungover, and forgetful. He went from being one of the league's best hitters to literally being the worst. Oh went my god, being really? One of the league's best that's there's something about the brain that's so scary to me, bro. Like the brain is just piloting a, a meat mech. You know what I mean? You are not you. You are just your brain piloting your body. And, and you are uh, susceptible to the limitations of of the meat bag that you inhibit. You know what I'm saying? That's so strange to me. S hitters to literally being the worst. Like, he knows where the ball is, he can think about it, he can see it, but like, the body can't respond. And maybe the brain doesn't even respond at that point. It's weird, man. Due to a concussion, he had no idea. Coney thinks the world is a cartoon. <laughs> There's some cartoonish elements. Yeah, he had. Over that two-month span, the Yankees went from a playoff team to a last Your place. Your reality literally gets changed. That's crazy, dude. The brain is fucked up, man. Team Aaron Judge got injured. John Carlos Stanton got injured. They're big. <laughs> fucking hit the Johnny Cage. He punched him in the tip. <laughs> All right, we'll look closer when it was when it was winding up. Injured. Their big-time free agent signing, Carlos Rodon, was injured until <laughs> July, came back, pitched bad, got heckled by his own fans, and blew a kiss at them. Less than a month later, he got injured again. Probably the best moment of the season happened in Oakland when Domingo Armand, who had an ERA over 5, threw the 24th perfect game in Major League history. Less There's only been 24? This shit's old. And a month later, he's essentially off the team. Oh my god. After, according to reports, he allegedly showed up to the clubhouse intoxicated, fought with his teammates, fought Come with the on, manager, bro. flipped a couch, smashed a TV, was taken to a sauna to sweat the alcohol out, then was taken into the team nap room and watched by security until he left. The team what room? <laughs> what are we paying these players for? A nap room? Got a bunch of toddlers in the NBA or the MLB? I know that shit wouldn't be in the NBA. Those athletes are superhumans. You need a nap, bitch. <laughs> he was placed on the restricted list, voluntarily checked into rehab, and will likely not pitch again for the rest of the year. And all of this negativity may have contributed to this amazing meltdown. Oh, hit Aaron it. Boone. Yep. After, according to umpire scorecard, this umpire missed 17 strike calls. Aaron Boone <laughs> lost it, saying, Oh, God. What the f are you doing? He was ejected, then went even crazier, telling the umpire, You fing stink over and over again. The umpire responded by saying, You fing stink. Then Aaron Boone <laughs> went to the plate, got on his knee to draw a line in the dirt, got up, and mocked the ump by making a hilarious strike three <laughs> call. After coming back and talking even more trash, the umpire told him to go, and he finally did. Yeah, throw him out of the game. I want to be an umpire so bad just for this. I love that so much. Get the fuck out of here. I would do this. <laughs> strike one. One. 
Strike two. Strike three, you're out. You spin it three times. <laughs> As of now, the Yankees making the playoffs. In <laughs> My low tier god umpire animations. He's safe is a long shot however the other team in new york is even worse ow let's enter the season a long shot however the other team in new york <laughs> he's so happy he's so happy to be out playing baseball look at how excited he oh my god that is a that is a moniker of pure joy look at that <laughs> oh it didn't even hit him oh it's like right on the nose ow this shit a day can need their nap time. Can't say they did a bad job. Can uh, tell them the rules without them getting mad. Someone get these cause they juice bots and get them out of hot pots. Bend them. I gotta turn that off too. These TTSs have gotten really bad. The only good new one is Witch. Is even worse. The Mets enter the season with the highest payroll in MLB history. Five times more than the first place. Witch is so good. Witch is excellent, yeah. Has anyone abused SpongeBob yet? I didn't know there was a SpongeBob. No. Baltimore Orioles. Pirate's great. Pirate is also very good. They had the two highest paid players. Look at how much the money they the have. Hold on. The highest payroll in MLB history. Holy! The fuck did they do to earn that? I, I like. When I was growing up, Yankees were always the team, and everybody hated the fucking Yankees because they were rich and they won everything. And they assembled, like, a super team. That's how they won everything, is they just threw all their money at the best players. Five times more than the first-place Baltimore Orioles. They had the two highest-paid players of all time on the same team. Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer got paid more than four teams entire roster holy shit dude each of them is making more i'm gonna go play baseball or than the entire tampa bay rays pitching staff combined holy in total shit. the mets spent over 100 million dollars oh just my on pitching. god Before dude more, they have the second worst pitching staff in the league <laughs> i was gonna say do you if you're gonna spend a lot of money you do it on pitching right that makes sense they enter the season with a 77% chance to make they the They just have to perform. Today, but... they have a 0.8% chance. Serger and Verlander, however, are in the middle of a playoff race that has already led to one fight. Chat, does anybody in the in the stream know baseball enough to know, like, what is the most powerful position you could, like, really spec into? It's got to be pitcher, right? Because pitcher controls the flow of the game. It doesn't work like that? No. I mean, shortstops are like superstars, right? But catcher? What makes catchers good? I thought that would be like a low floor, low ceiling kind of position. A pitcher that can hit. I didn't even know pitchers were allowed to hit. I thought they didn't. Catchers tells pitchers what to throw. Really? Why do they make the call? I know Otani is like the big guy right now, but I didn't even know what he played. I assumed he was a pitcher. Oh, yeah, he's a pitcher who bats, right? Yeah. I didn't know. I, yeah, I didn't know any of that. The Mets shocked many in August by trading their two highest paid pitchers for prospects. Shortly after, an anonymous Mets player supposedly told the New York Post that Verlander had a, quote, diva attitude that caused Scherzer and others to have problems with him. However true that is, today, they're literally rivals. Scherzer was sent to Texas. They finished last three out of the last five years. That is an ill-fitting uniform. <laughs> Uh, we gotta get him a size down. It's five years, but even with Jacob DeGrom getting injured, they had the lowest ERA among starters while also scoring the second most runs in the league. They've held first place the entire season. Thanks, Pogman. Verlander was sent to Houston, who were massive favorites going into the year. They've lost Jose Altuve and Jordan Alvarez Ow, for a fuck. huge part of the season, lost two of their best starters for the season. Bro, why don't more people just injure star players? 
I mean, in baseball, it's kind of obvious because all the attention is on you. In football, why don't people just 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 chop block other people? You know what I'm saying? Because it's a crime. No, but like, all right. If I'm if I'm if I'm a defensive lineman, is that what it would be? Maybe a linebacker. Whatever. The, the position that could kill Tom Brady. I might just kill Tom Brady. I don't know. Wouldn't kill him. Just maybe send his kneecap in the other direction. You know what I'm saying? You would get fined for that. Yeah, but my team would pay me more if I if I got rid of him, right? You know what I'm saying? You were the one that called the Tanya Harding hit. That's not the same. I'm talking team sports. If it's 1v1, it's personal. If it's a team, it's like, well, sorry, Tommy boy. <laughs> my bad, bro. This isn't Hitman. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying if I am a dog shit football player, if I am a terrible player, and I think I've said this during another one of these streams, but I never got a good answer. If I am a terrible football player, but I know that I could, if, if I'm a big guy, and I know that I could knock a guy the fuck out, why wouldn't I just do that? Right? You'll be suspended and fined. And I will be handsomely rewarded by the team after the fact, under the table. We here at the Las Vegas Raiders do not condone that sort of behavior. We don't appreciate anything that this player did as they slip me a couple milli under the table and we collect that nice ring. You get know what I'm saying? Cody pretending to be smart is my favorite. I just found a hashtag life hack for the NFL. I've solved the game. They need to put in a rule for that or something. Because I don't know what they're going to do. I don't even know how you stop it. How do you even stop that from happening? Going into this... Hashtag life hack murder. Hashtag life hack. Uh, murder people who cause you grief. It's a great way to eliminate them from your life. Especially if they're toxic. Game In July, they had a chance to finally... Get Easy way to deal with them. Compromise them to a permanent end. Get into first. <laughs> Got you should make 60 second TikTok life hacks for sports professionals to consume. <laughs> I've become a sports TikToker, but all of my TikToks have to do with like uh, immorally getting rid of the competition, poisoning their bubble gum, <laughs> Testy, when finding ways to, to fuck up their quality of life. Almost hit That's Jordan funny. Alvarez in the head. I'm not clicking on the link. I don't care to read for that that sort of thing. I'd like to imagine the situation that's happening in my head, and it's probably a lot better than whatever's on that web page. It would work if I did it. Two innings later, the <laughs> lather the ball in rice and <laughs> shows nailed Marcus Simeon with a pitch, which it would work if I did it. When Andrew Heaney oh, we saw this video. Yeah. In Two innings later, the Astros nailed Marcus Simeon with a pitch, which he believed was. Oh my god. Mallory just sent me Meanwhile, a... Meanwhile, Eagles fan throw battery snowballs at Santa. To be fair, he was a drunk. <laughs> Mallory just sent me a Facebook message that said, let's say I want McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Time for girl dinner. Girl dinner at 11.16 p.m. McDonald's. <laughs> Shark wife I proposed to you a deal I said yes please McDouble I shouldn't be doing it I already ate too much today But fuck it Retaliation Simeon would later get his revenge And save the division <laughs> lead When he hit this two run bomb To go up 6-3 to three. He stared down the pitcher and talked trash to the catcher as he was touching home. The Rangers continued to pour it on, and after this grand slam, went up 13 to 3. Marcus. That's what I'm saying, dude. Big numbers 13 to 3, 16 runs. Not like that minor league shit. Simeon scored again. This is where the hitters hit. For the Astros, starting an altercation that caused the benches to clear. As of now, the Rangers, who have been amazing, are still holding a tight lead on the Astros, who are amazing. I, I will say, uh, turn it off. Give me that. Turn it off. 
Turn that off. I, that, that, shit, that hit me at a time when I wasn't ready for it. My guard was down. Holy fucking shit. Whatever king of hell that is, I want him exercised. Holy shit, dude. Oh my god. I was not ready for that. That was a critical hit. And I'm about to drop a critical bomb on uh, chat. Whatever, man. I've done a lot of these tonight. Subscribe to Twitch Prime or Tier 1. Otherwise, you're going to get ads. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. Don't mind this to me. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. They can't all be... Ho it's a bunt. I had to bunt. Thanks, Kilowatt, for the Prime. Drop a Prime. Otherwise, you're going to get ads right now. They're coming right now, and you can't stop them. No one can. The unending march of time continues on. <laughs> Fucking, I have a laundry music. Thank you, Reverse Pro. Oh, I don't like that. I hate that guy's name. I hate saying it. Reverse Briss. Like with glue? And with the new accusations of Scherzer and Verlander, who Stitching? apparently don't like each other, mixed with these two teams who we know don't like each other, this race could get very interesting. Kind of like in this game. Baseball colors are great. Don't like each other. I love like some of these like the uniform colors and some of the stuff that they have. I love this shit. Could get very interesting. Kind of like in this game in Cleveland, which ended with a player getting knocked out cold. During one of the worst stretches for a team you'll ever see. Two weeks after <laughs> this, they tried. During one of the what worst stretches approaches? for a team you'll ever see. Are you allowed to do that? It was a strike, though. Why did he just leave? You'll ever You're allowed see. to just Two walk away? This, they traded their best pitcher, traded their best reliever, traded their second best hitter. Their most disappointing player, Lance Lynn, also got traded. Since leaving, he's absolutely dominated for a different team. Oh. They also traded Kenyon Middleton, who immediately after trashed the White Sox, saying the team is a mess, claiming a pitcher would literally sleep in the bullpen. Players skipped practice, and nobody ever got in trouble. When Middleton returned to play the White Sox, the team didn't even show his name on the scoreboard. <laughs> That's petty. This seemed like revenge for his comment, but the White Sox say this was just a glitch in the system. During this span, they also had the notorious Anderson Ramirez face. <laughs> they don't have a nap room. I can't. I guess they need that. Here's some tired little angels. Oh, poor babies. Which started the game before on this play where Tim Anderson made a tag that knocked the runner's hand off the base. After the <laughs> game, okay, come on, dude. That's fucked up. Out! <laughs> Definitely saw it. His eyes are locked in there. After review, he was called out. The Guardians thought this was a dirty play by Anderson. Jose Ramirez says that's Anderson very funny. Has made dirty tags like this. Wait, why did Bro duck? Anderson. Jose Ramirez says Bro just hit the ah! touches to. Oh, he's because he the catcher threw it. I thought the batter hit it. Bryce Harper hit of her today because he listened to a local radio caller and it fired him up. Really? Talking baseball Hold on, you guys didn't see him. Six hundred ninety-six quadrillion. Oh, no, stop. Seven hundred seventeen trillion. Stop. Nine hundred fifteen billion. Eight hundred twenty-five million. Eight hundred forty thousand five hundred twelve. No more links, okay? How about no more links? <laughs> the watch Moji lady actually casting Linkaga. All right, hold on. Let me get out of the way to show you what happened. Knocked the runner's hand off the go. base. Yup. <laughs> After review, he was That's called pretty good. out. The Guardians thought this Doop. was a dirt. Just, just sweeping the base. Just making sure there's nothing on it. I like that. That's funny. Pretty play back. Made hardware off. And Jose Ramirez Ooh. proceeded to... God goes Anderson! Oh my God. Ramirez has essentially become a Cleveland folk hero for this. Tim Anderson, not so much. The Guardians minor league team did a Jose Ramirez appreciation oh my God, night dude. where anyone with the name Tim got in for free, but they had to sit down on the lawn. Dude.
getting into a fight in professional sports, unless it's hockey, seems like the worst gamble of your life. Because, like, if you lose... <laughs> oh. Anderson got suspended six games while... We're yeah, he started it, which is, like, part of it, right? Because if the other guy starts it and you lose, I don't think people would care that much, but... Ramirez only got two... You're either a legend or you're toast, yeah. ...because he instigated it, and to make matters even worse, a few days later... Thank you, Shining another Wizard. ...another report claims Anderson also got into a fight with teammate Yasmani Grandal, who, according to the story... A fun name. ...wanted to leave for the All-Star break a day early. Tim Anderson allegedly responded by saying, quote, F that. If he wants to leave, I'll pay for his flight. Then, Grandal confronted Anderson and slapped him in the face. Jeez. With these recent events and trades, the White Sox are on the brink of a rebuild despite only a few years ago being considered one of the most talented teams in baseball. What's, like, the... What is the... How do I put this? So, my understanding is, like, some teams are, like, historically always bad, right? Just just career bad. Cincinnati, or the Cleveland Browns, right, for football. What is that? Is it Cubs? Royals. Kansas City Royals? I thought they were pretty good one year. Athletics? I remember the Royals having one year, right? Rockies? Ah, Rockies. I'm trying to think of the baseball team I've heard about the least. Mariners? <laughs> Interesting. Tigers? Does Detroit have any good teams? I feel like Lions are always a joke, too. Damn, they got Lions and Tigers? The Angels also have that problem. In fact, they've oh my, funny. had two of the most talented stupid. players. Stop, stop, stop. Stop with this stupid joke. Minus two to all of you. Of all time. For Don't plus two. Shut the fuck up. For six I get so mad when people plus two shitty chat jokes. That makes me so mad. Your job is so much easier than mine. I want you to know that, okay? Your job is so much easier. I'm doing the hard work. I should get plus twos. I deserve to be compensated. Six years and haven't made the playoffs once. Going into this season, they knew if they don't win this year, Otani <laughs> is almost without a. I need a nap room. Yeah, I need a stream. I need a stream closer. Like I stream for the first three hours, and then I bring somebody in for the last like hour and a half, two hours, just to close it out. Have a big like theme song play. Out, leaving in free agency. <laughs> To either make the play that's really funny actually i they like that went for it otani started the season as arguably the most dominant pitcher in the <laughs> walk-up theme posting an era under two while allowing a league low 102 batting average in april what is this celtic end, ass music like a Cleveland Browns no i'm not the browns i'm um uh the chargers they're good right I'm the Chargers. <laughs> runs. The Angels were hovering around 500, but in June... No. <laughs> he emerged as... Are you sure? Hands down, the best hitter in the game. He led the league in homers, RBIs, on-base percentage, WRC+, plus, slugging percentage, and war... Oh, this is the Otani guy. Yeah! 30 innings with a 3.26 ERA. He won Player of the Month in what MLB.com said may be the single greatest month in MLB history. Towards the end of June, the oh. Angels climbed their way into a playoff spot. But in July, yeah. things... I'm a Chargers fan. You hit the sacred word. That timing was so good. I'm a Chargers fan. That timing hit. <laughs> that timing jump scared me. I thought it was in the video. That timing, like, oh. It started to go south. That was amazing. <laughs> I hit the secret word. Thank you, E. Compton. Thanks for the. E. Compton, you live in. Well, I don't want to dox you. You don't live in the Chargers land. <laughs> what are you doing enjoying the Chargers? First, their shortstop got hurt. Then, Gio Urshela got hurt. Desperate to win now, the Angels almost immediately traded for two in view. I was five and I thought lightning bolts were cool. W. I like that, actually. That's why I, I was a Jaguars fan. 
Because I was like, ooh, they're like a big cat, but it's like not like a lion or a tiger. Jaguars is kind of cool. But apparently they're really bad too. Fielders. Things got worse. On July 3rd, Mike Trout went down. The very next day, Anthony Rendon... X2? <laughs> Wait, I can get times two? Not even plus two. Times two? I want to farm those. Do multipliers for the stream? <laughs> ...was injured in the middle of a stretch Ultra where the Angels boost. went 1 and 10. <laughs> Divided by 2? No, don't do that. All my progress. Taking their playoff... Stop! ...from 46% to 8.5% <laughs> so in only 11 games. Rumors of a trade started swirling. You I've heard about him. this guy. You can't let him... But I thought Otani was like an old player. Am I thinking of someone else? Yeah, he's only 29. Did he have like a great year like years ago? He's 29. Did he have like a great year when he was like 23, 24 or something? He played in Japan a bit. That might be what I'm thinking of. Yeah, because I'd heard that name before. Um, but, you know, I don't follow it regularly, so. Walk for nothing? Knowing that Otani is almost certainly gone after this year, trading him for prospects seemed like a logical thing to do. And by not trading Shohei Otani right now, it, this could be a seven to eight year That's right. problem. The entire baseball world debated. The Angels got hot, but their playoff odds were still only 15% when they shocked everyone. Not only did they announce they were keeping Otani, they also traded for all-star Lucas Giolito. The very next day, Otani pitched go. a complete game shut. Curse of chat, you get times zero Gorilla Cat. <laughs> that was a really good blank then. Out in the Wait, times zero? No, I, you can't. Wait, I just realized you did that to me. You're not allowed to do that. You can't times zero. Nothing can time. Nothing is times zero. That can't happen. First game of a double. I blocked the curse of chat. It is not effective against me. I am wearing a charm. The charm of Dan Clancy, CEO of Twitch. Header, then hit two bombs in the second game. In what MLB.com said may be the single greatest one-day performance <laughs> in MLB history. The ring of Bezos. Right after, they added two more solid hitters in CJ Chrome and Randall Grichik. Going into the Grichik? trade deadline with momentum and the baseball world behind them, they immediately lost... 11 out of 14 games. So. Mike Trout and Rendon have still yet to return, and the Angels' playoff odds have sunk to 0.5%. With Otani on his way to winning another unanimous MVP, the biggest question Aww. in MLB now becomes, what team is Otani going to next? Man. Future Yankee? <laughs> Sell the team. The Angels released everyone they acquired at the deadline today. Come to the Sox, Otani. <laughs> Future Mariner. I don't know anything about it. Baseball seems intimidating to get into. There's too much to follow. Too many numbers and math and bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Probably just a Dodger. Okay. Okay. One more movie. Nigel. R this is a video about the Scrabble Goat Slayer. <laughs> the greatest Scrabble player to ever live. Can he do the impossible? One more time. Let's find out. Richard's incredible. I honestly, so somebody in the Discord recommended this to me, and I just want to see what the, the strong Scrabble words are. <laughs> More than anything, I want to know what the Scrabble meta is. Is it cues? Is it small words? Run of dominance at the North American Championship from Wax? Oh, that's a good one. To By the way, I should do this because it's a relatively small channel. This is Will Anderson. Video only has 25K views. Give it some love. Episode 10 of Scrabble History. Let's give it a shot. Check it out. 13 may never be equaled. After 2013... Nigel went through what for him was somewhat of a dry spell. Jeez. He came in 16th in 2014, didn't participate in 2015 or 16, Bro fell and off, finished off. third 
in 2017. That's fucked up. But at the 2018 North American Championship in Buffalo, New York, with 28 rounds completed and only three left to go, Nigel had regained his familiar position at the top of the standings. I'm looking at where te- New York, Maine, Ontario, New York, Oregon, Texas, Ontario. A lot of Canadians, actually. Ontario, Ontario, and Quebec. There's three Canadians in the top ten. And one Malaysia? <laughs> huh? The only player left with any chance at all. Three New York, too. What the fuck is going on? All to catch him was Joel Sherman, himself a former national and world champ. Joel would need to win three straight games against the best player in the world okay. to pull it off. Those three games were an absolutely spectacular display of Scrabble at its most compelling and perfect candidates for an episode of Scrabble history. (laughs) Needing just one more win to clinch the championship, Nigel goes first in round 29 and with Uh, Deer. Without a useful Q play available, he exchanges it to start the game. Joel is overrun with consonants oh, and you wisely can elects to that? exchange as well. Okay. I didn't know you were allowed to exchange. Nigel okay. draws the Z and plays his top scoring move of Zebra. zebra. Yeah! Two. Though Joel is waiting with the... Uh, glorps. Seven letter bingo of pro legs on his rack. That's a word? He takes his time after Zebra to find an even better move of Gospeler for 94. Dude, double let's go, Joel. Nigel Bingo's right back with Tree Gusted. Disc degusted. Oh, that's good. He used every fucking letter. And after Joel's pawing, both players trade Bingo's. Nigel with Oliveri and Joel answering with Baronets. <laughs> oh my god, how are they using every letter? On his next turn, I use like dog. Nigel has several good candidate moves. No way you can make a word out of that. Milk. M- m- you know, more. Including the simple Mopey for 45. Mopey, yeah. Uh... He finds an even better choice of Pokely instead <laughs> to score three oh more points. Oh my god! Draw two Nigel! More with both blanks unplayed, use up the clunky k and keep the m with several places to yeah, use yeah yeah m m could come with later the blank in hand joel makes an extremely perceptive move of phi for 34 <gasps> oh and look at that he got to get all the other ones he has why for the same score and in general the i is a better bingo tile than the o but duplicated eyes are much worse than duplicated o's and there are five eyes unseen to Joel that could derail his bingo chances if he draws them after foe. Wait. I see. So he wants to use he wants to get rid of the I instead of the O. Because the eyes are more plentiful. To Joel that could okay. derail You don't want more eyes, yeah. Bingo chances if he draws You'd rather them keep after the O. Foe. Okay. Both players proceed sure. to play several optimal moves, including Nigel's obscure six-letter "My God," Joel's top. That's real. Top scoring bingo of out. They're just making shit up. Nigel's responsive anterior and Joel's J bomb of Hefe. Nigel's <laughs> next move is more nuanced, holding an. Unplayed- how long are these rounds? Like how long? How long do they? Is it like chess where they have to do it like pretty quick? Able out vies. He play- 15 seconds? No way. Plays out Vi for 22 points instead of out Vi for 26, two rows lower. Nigel knows that leaving the double letter score open could give Joel extremely damaging responses. Mm, with yes, many we put it up. Tiles to come. I like that. So using it up for only a four point Wise. sacrifice is excellent recognition. Bro has Osu right there. On his part. Oh, you can't see? Oh, my bad. Hold on. Let me get out of the way. My bad, chat. Bro, words are cool. Joel's next move is even more fascinating. Holding six consonants and a... Texas dinner! Blank. Rind for just ten points. In a nearly even game like this, scoring only 10 points requires a huge amount of confidence. But Rind blocks the majority of Nigel's bingos and other high-scoring plays on the right side of the board. Couldn't he make just 
if he had a G, it's grind. What's he going to do with that X? X? Including Q plays through the I. And by retaining NX blank on his rack, he threatens Onyx for 59 points next turn. Of course, he could just play Onyx now, but do they know? Neither... They don't know what letters they have, right? Oh, he counted the G's. Oh, yeah, he yeah. Even okay. better than that on the right side, the Pokemon Cole will find himself in trouble, holding mostly low point consonants with nowhere to equalize the score. Trundle. Sensing the threat, Nigel plays Had, blocking the X spot. From <laughs> his POV, it's not just Onyx. Had is such a giga Chad. Had three letters and Oryx that Joel can have. Something even more devastating, like Calyx in that spot, is also likely. With damn, it, dude, he even has definitions here. Look at, I didn't know that. Calyx, the outer protected covering of a flower. This YouTuber rules. Both C's and three A's unplayed. Had blocks all of these. Scores solidly. Bro, he's got issue right there. Use the issue. Lines hook now and retains both of the remaining S's so he can play in that spot later. Joel draws the Q along with his X and plays Tax for 29 to take mm. a small lead. It's another very good move, threatening Chi and Taxi for 42 when he draws an I. You could play QI? I didn't know that. And at minimum guarantees him Caddy and- We can't see the definitions. There aren't any definitions. It was just that one. Wait. Nope. No, there are definitions. Oh. I didn't... I'll go up here. <laughs> and of course, Please. he can also likely with both C's and three A's unplayed. Okay. Had blocks all of these, scores solidly compared to plays that cash the Ryan's You can't play docs? Now. Can and you play YX? That feels stupid. Both of the remaining S's so he can play in that spot later. Joel draws the Q Antiquity. along with his X and plays Tax for 29 to take nice. a small lead. Wise. 243 draws an I and at minimum guarantees him Caddy and Taxa for 43 if he uses his blank. The Q Kavi? is otherwise useful on this board, so this is a really creative idea to generate a scoring spot that greatly favors him. Now facing a narrow just deficit, shit Nigel up. again senses danger and elects to play... <laughs> you should have to use the I word agree. you play in a I sentence. I agree. I want them to prove it's real. Yeah. You had a chance of winning before I got six points gora latched. I think that was like an actual, uh, I think that was on The Simpsons, right? Didn't that happen? Tried to play a word, I don't remember. You need to Which block is right. the tax hooks. Staying patient. I'm sure these guys know the definitions. I'm not. With his two S's. If Joel is saddled with the Q and has no useful place to play it, a sequence with Rhines could be enough to deliver him a win in the endgame. Uh -huh. So with his tournament life on the line, Joel makes a brilliant response to guarantee victory here. Yumi Axe burning the blank as an S for 51 points. You're fucking kidding me. What is that? This gives him a big lead heading in. They're just making shit up, dude. Stop game. cheating, and man. And in reserve. Imagine the corruption in high levels of Scrabble. Imagine what that looks like. The rule makers are just... Nope, it's a word. It exists. It's an archaic term from the 17th century. It's a real thing. They'll have outplays with any time. Who me X. If you've ever been curious to watch Nigel play chess instead of Scrabble, here's your chance. Bro, he has cheeses. Chess. <laughs> chess is Nigel. It is chess. Here, it is chess. Okay, enough, yeah. As Joel responds with his own top move of Knave, winning an absolutely thrilling round 29. Thrilling, and keeping truly. his hopes alive for at least one more round. Oh remember, man! Needs to win not once, but How's he gonna keep winning? No way he keeps winning, bro. To actually pull off this miracle, he still got a long way to go. His brain is on Round fire. Round starts with Joel's exchange of you you, leaving excellent bingo tiles behind. Nigel makes a stunning choice in response, exchanging OQ instead of playing the customary cat for 24. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, he would... That's not how you spell cat. Surely play cat, but Nigel knows that Joel has a strong five... That's not how you spell that. 
I would call over uh, uh, an authority immediately, trying to spell Q-A-T. Believe after his short exchange. That's not allowed. By countering with his own exchange. <laughs> Actually, there is a C there. Instead of playing cat, he'll reduce the scores for most of Joel's bingos by a fair margin, eliminating the possibility of the cat's hook, as well as bingos that hit the triple word score, uh -huh. and greatly increases his odds of responding with a bingo on his next turn. Yeah. But very, very few players would even cat jump consider exchanging OQ here. Joel's clunky draw of BF foils his bingo chance. Classic so blunder. So he dumps them with Fab for 16. Okay. And Nigel responds with another surprising move of in for 11. Nigel. Bro, where's my McDouble? <laughs> that was 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Where, uh, did she ever order the food? <laughs> uh. Clearly sees the higher scoring overlap of Binal, but the combination Don't of that A, word. E, L, and T work extremely well with the normally mediocre B, making Nigel's move a defensible choice. Uh-huh. Joel gets the first bingo down with his best move of resting, while Nigel draws Dude. the Z and plays yet another two-tile move in Za. Joel <laughs> responds with Raj for only 14 points. Use it's the... A I see a great word for you, Joel. I see a great... Oh, there are no resting E's. Never mind. If I saw one E in the middle, bro, Joel, I got a great word for you curious move at first glance but the rationale is similar to nigel's earlier <laughs> rain sex here's your devil sir burgle 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 jurgle the furgle jurgle stop 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 I hate the fact that it's a jump scare. I hate the fact that there's not even the the like the the sound that it's a donation. <laughs> like it's a, if it's a bit, there's no warning. It's just hurgling and gurgling. <laughs> I hate that shit, man. It's scary. I don't. I hate the hurgle gurgle, man. The Hurgle Gurgle Man. I'm gonna have bad dreams about him. <laughs> it's like the Baba Duke. Holy shit. Oh my god, dude. Exchange. Joel knows that Nigel's tiles are By the way, Rain Sex was very funny, chat. That I'll I'll i I'll give it up for that one. Much better than average. So he goes on the Reverse Lorax audio, that is what he would sound like. Defensive, taking away two of Nigel's best bingo lanes. That being said, scoring weekly and leaving <laughs> TM sex. four consonants could create. Do we gotta get those S and the X away from each other? I did, my brain is filling in the 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 blanks. Out. After Nigel's play of the Hebrew letter Fe, Joel's replenishment draw couldn't be better. You could play Hebrew letters? E -O There's a lot blank. of those. The X stops him from bingoing, though, and for the second straight Demos. game, he plays Hefe, this time making a... Not Hefe again! The Hefe Gambit! Coming in again! 39 point X. Nigel answers with his top-scoring play of Selva, opening the a wet forest in the Amazon basin. Some right. tiles he'll need to come back in the game, but Joel quickly dashes those plans with a great find of Monides for 78. An elegy Only performed the by one person. Tricky and Dosmos to the S would have scored more. Meanwhile, Nigel's tiles have gone Jesus south, Christ, and Joel dude. continues to pad his lead. While Nigel Pro had to play tug. <laughs> When you have to play tug, you know it's over. Eventually finds the got no letters. sorbitol for 82. Sorbitol? A crystalline substance uses a substitute for sugar. You could put any fucking letters together and it's a word, man. To narrow the this gap, is ridiculous. draw of UWW slows him down again. Play oo- Oh, uh, he can't play oo woo. <laughs> play oo woo right here for double ward. And several moves later, Joel strikes with Thurled to go up by over 100. Thurled? To thorough means to vibrate. Never heard that. Points. 
In this seemingly doomed scenario, Nigel makes an amazing play to give himself a chance. What does he do? Annie for 11 points, hooking Yin. This sets up an enormous spot where an S can play, with Nigel holding the fourth and final S, uh -huh. creating an entire ah. new flag to pair with the open T of Thurled at the top of the board. Wow, so he could he could pop either of these, and he has good letters for it. Where triple-triple bingos could still deliver him a victory. Annie also takes an a L Siegley! Bingo, and Joel has the last L. He quickly plays Seagull to block the spot, but from Pertaining Joel's to POV, Seagull wasn't a guaranteed victory. For example, had Nigel drawn the P lurking in the bag instead of the V, he would have responded with Poetide. Look at the editing here. For 158 points and miraculously won the game and the championship. Uh huh. An option like a Seatle for Joel, leaving Nigel set up untouched, might have resulted in fewer disaster scenarios. Seekel will still win the overwhelming majority of the time, though. Afterwards, Nigel plays his only bingo of overside for 78, cutting the gap somewhat. I didn't but even know Joel that was a still word. wins comfortably, 451 to 422. Damn. This sets up a climactic showdown in round 31. Let's go, Joel. No way he wins the next three game times. Will though. be the 2018. His ass American can't win three times. Champion. Triple a limb. Nigel opens with his best. Damn, bro, got three O's. Best move of rookie, and Joel responds with uh -huh. his only move that plays. That is the worst draw I've ever seen. <laughs> what the fuck is that draw? Are, are you kidding me? There's one consonant, and it's a Q. What do you do there? He could probably play queer if he gets the R. I mean, you—that's a lot of letters to get set up. On a bonus square, queer for twenty. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So we just pop them all. Four, yeah. Set it right now. Yeah. Three vowels. Despite strong bingo tiles, Nigel somehow doesn't have one. Yeah, you get double letter for queer too. Play yeah. Tyco for eighteen points, keeping the strong EST combination for next turn. Joel answers with rainy <laughs> queerist. He kept the EST. Ah, wise. The strong EST combination for next turn. Joel answers <laughs> with Rainy for 22, which is his highest scoring move here. It does have a major drawback of leaving only vowels, but other options keeping better balance of vowels and consonants aren't all that appealing on this board without an S to hook queers or tycos. Also, keep in mind that Nigel has a reputation for making huge setup plays. And the triple letter score. That's his ult. Tycho He's gonna pop his ult. Quite suspicious. Blocking potentially huge Z plays in that spot makes a lot of sense for Joel. Nigel draws three eyes after Tycho, and without That's a good crazy. way of that using seems two awful. of them at once, he plays G for sixteen, underlapping the Q. That sucks. Terrible play. Just Joel two. Has vowelitis as well, and plays Oleo mm. to burn through oh. some more. While not Oleo. Like Oreo, but with an L? Nigel draws yet another I. Stop drawing eyes, dude! <laughs> Joel picks up the X and he had to Zai for 38 points. It's a scary move. He had move, to put it back. A new Curse of I? Potentially Bro, got every I on the board. Nigel has an O for Oxo, but it's a risk he has to take, with other options like Zai under the G scoring 10 fewer points. Mm. But not only does Nigel not have an O, None of the three bingos on his rack hook onto Lee to score on the triple lane. Instead, he plays Leafist and Tycho's for 74. Uh -huh. Lefties and Queers was an option for three more points, but Nigel likely preferred not to open so many good letters for potential eight-letter bingos for Joel. Oh, yeah, that could be easy. You just hook onto any of those at the top. Bingoing is far... <laughs> Lefties and Queers from Joel's mind as oh his God, rack dude. has run into big trouble with six <laughs> consonants and only one vowel. And he plays recut for 18, leaving three <laughs> consonants for next turn. He badly needs vowels from the bag to stay in range, especially after Nigel draws an O and plays TOF for a very solid... TOF is a porous limestone. I didn't know that.
That's a word. 54 points, hooking Oxo and taking a big lead. But once again, Joel draws just what he needs in the nick of time. No Two way. Two vowels, an S, and the blank. And he played. No way he got snarls. Is his highest scoring bingo of Send Lurdens it. to get right back in the game. Lurdens? A dull or sluggish person. <laughs> After Nigel's move, Joel draws That's six mauve. more consonants, including the J. Yeah, bro got the blank over and over. That's cheating. Plays Jane for 27, ensuring that he undoubles his ends. But just as he's back in range on the scoreboard, Nigel plays Alidad for 67. Oh, da, 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 da. my life points. Back up once again. Alidad! At this point, computer engines suggest that Nigel is about 85% to win this game and, by extension, the championship. Oh, hit the fucking summoning salt music. Let's go, Joel. Joel draws only... Big... B <laughs> you only need... <laughs> One vowel after J... <laughs> it's right there! It's right there! You only need, like, two letters. Big pianist, like a seven foot tall classical and, musician, and he needs it to play big for thirty seven. <laughs> he played big vowel after Jane, and he needs it to play big, big? for thirty seven, covering one of the open triple word scores. Okay. Nigel's post bingo draw contains the toxic UW combination, so he breaks it up with mm. a strong overlap of wide for thirty four. Once again, Joel draws only one vowel, which he's forced to spend. To what are we going to do, Zep Joel? For a hefty 50 points. Jeez. What's Zepp? Short for Zeppelin? Nigel is now up by only 24. And Honestly, that draw looks pretty bad, bro. He's Humid, a maybe? Situation. His highest Humidity. Is he is a Y. From the T of Leafist. Okay, Tumify, I guess. For 36. All right. But that move opens up this mostly closed board, including putting an E out in open space. Shouldn't have done that. He can turn, turn, uh, rest, nurse, nurse, uh, turn to Tren Stern? Ah. Badly needs Rents. bingo. Yeah. So Nigel plays fumed instead on the interior. <laughs> this is why we aren't in the Scrabble Championship. The yeah. For only twenty one. I would just be saying words out loud at the table. One. Nigel is likely concerned by the scarcity of vowels in the unseen tiles. Despite its higher score, Tumify keeps two consonants, exposing him to some disaster draws. Whereas fumed keeps an E as well as the Y, which uh -huh. likes to absorb consonants. Joel's last two moves also used relatively few tiles, signaling strength and likely adding to Nigel's reluctance to open the board. This shit is like poker. You gotta like bluff and shit? But 15 points is a lot to give up for Nigel. Can we have a night where chat fights you in old board games like Scrabble and Monopoly and Battleship? That's a really fun idea, but how do we play Battleship where I can show the chat... I can show the game without the chat seeing my shit? <laughs> how do we do that? Thank you, Noah, for the prime. I, there's not a way to do it. Here. Also, chat would shit on me in Scrabble. There's 1,200 of you here. <laughs> for the third straight turn, Joel is hanging on for dear life making a move, leaving four consonants on his rack. This time, it's knob for 24. Still, his four-consonant leave has been getting progressively stronger, with Joel, the what are you gonna do? st combo a serious threat to Bingo if he can finally manage to draw some vowels. Nigel now faces another pivotal choice, and it's a very Jeez. similar decision to versus Tumify. Here he can play touchy for 36, Throwing open the board just Ooh, like Tumify. Pretty good. Instead, he plays. The I don't know if you want to though, because that would put it down to triple word. That could get him like year yearns. No, not that far. You could do something. Offensive, echoey for only fifteen. <laughs> oh, desperately gee. trying to prevent a bingo from Joel at any cost. <laughs> you. Sacrificing 21 points. I would absolutely play you. Is even more extreme. And then I'll bring up the video on my phone. Than last turn. 
but Nigel's hoping that blocking the E of Mauve and the T hook of Est is worth the sacrifice. Once again, Joel only draws a single vowel, and now it's Man. all come down to this. What is he going to do? He faces a brutally difficult choice with his championship hopes on the line. With just three tiles left in the bag, Joel decides to go all in. You have to, do you go this way? Because there's a double word there. Where else would you go? You could go here, Yan? Yar? Y'all? Y'all. Y-A-W is what? F that's nine triple word, 27. On drawing a bingo starting with S by playing on, emptying the bag, and leaving four consonants. Oh, on like that. Okay. For the fifth straight turn and praying <sighs> that Nigel doesn't have a bingo of his own. So he needs the blank. He needs vowels. To okay. instantly end the game. Unfortunately for Joel, he once again fails to draw any vowels from the oh, bag. Oh, man. What does he draw instead? S blank G. This is one of the most impactful and strings and memorable draws in Scrabble. No history. fucking Despite way. Not holding a single vowel on his rack, Joel now has strings Yo! on opposite sides of the board and Nigel is powerless to block both. Oh my god. As always. No. Wait, can they see each other's boards? Can they can you do that? Even in a losing Does Nigel know how fucked he is now? They can't. Okay, position, never mind. Nigel okay. makes his best end game move of Trave. Joel then lays down oh, his no. winning bingo oh, no. of strings. Dude, imagine being Nigel here. 80 points. Not this piece of, of shit. The most incredible no way. In <laughs> With this win. No reaction? No pop off or anything, huh? Joel clinched his second North American championship, putting him in an elite class of legendary players. For $10,000? <laughs> World cha I don't know why I think that should be more. I feel like that should be like 10,000 for being the, the, the best word person on the planet, right? Like, I feel like that should be a little bit higher. And these three games with Nigel were some of the most incredible Scrabble you'll ever see. In addition to securing him the title, these games pushed Joel's record <laughs> against Nigel to nine wins and three losses. I'd be so mad. This dude's making merch of me. An incredible achievement. In fact, Joel had to go through Nigel for his first championship as well. Oh, it's a hard counter. In 2001. Don't feel... Wait, they still play? In 2001? That Dude. Too bad for Nigel. He would go on to win the world championship in both 2018 and 2019 and remains the undisputed best player in the world. He's the GOAT. But on this day, after these incredible games, it was Joel Sherman standing atop the Scrabble world once again. Damn. I got to give it up to Joel, bro. He hides tiles in his beard. Just has a bunch of blanks. He sneezes. a chook. <laughs> Imagine a Scrabble cheating scandal. That was a good-ass movie. I'll give it up, bro. Excellent movie. These videos are what great. Watch more from this guy. I might. This is Will Anderson. I guess he does a lot of Scrabble content. I'd never heard of him, and I didn't know. Check him out. It's a, it's a small channel, so I'm going to drop a like. I'll give it up. Excellent movie. We'll watch some more later. I'll drop a sub. All right, uh, we'll do Samba de Amigo tomorrow, I guess. Tomorrow's Wheel Champ. Uh, hold on. Before we... I'm so hideously ugly. Do you have any products I should Bro buy? We'll do it tomorrow, Scrabble okay? For one single day. <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow. Um, Let me look at the Wheel Champ responses. So the Wheel Champ tomorrow is for best animal. And it seems as though we have... This many responses. Oh my god. Oh my god. 200 minus 47. So about 150. I guess. 
roughly. And a lot of these are probably repeats and whatever. And I think these will be fast because I can be like, no, that sucks right away. It'll be a fun stream, I think. We're doing Wheel Champ. The, the question is best animal. If you want to submit the best animal, uh, go to uh, Coney.gg, hit exclamation point, Wheel Champ in the chat. Let's do that. And we're going to do Wheel Champ tomorrow and then maybe a bit of a bounty. I'm not streaming Thursday because I'm going to L.A. for a secret thing. Thursday and then Sunday. So, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm sleepy. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow.